What's going on? It's your boy H Money, Mr. The Zone. We in the building, bro. You know what I mean? Great topic at hand tonight. Shakur Stevenson, the next Pernell Whitaker, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, Pernell Whitaker, one of the greatest fighters in the history of boxing. You know what I mean? Shakur Stevenson had a spectacular performance last night, bro. I'm still, I'm still in awe. I'm still in awe from what I seen last night. Shakur Stevenson looked great last night. He looked sharp. He looked very sharp last night, bro. You know, it's an honor and a privilege to be making this video about Shakur Stevenson, who's considered to be one of the best young fighters in the sport of boxing. Valix, JC in the chat, what it do? Valito, Jay Sizzle, what's good? My brother JC, JC the Don. The mind taker in the building. Yes, bro, we got a lot of topics tonight we want to talk about in the sport of boxing. I want to start off by talking about Shakur Stevenson and his spectacular performance from last night. The man looked sharp. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, Shakur Stevenson, his defense was so good. His defense was so good. In six rounds, he only took 18 punches. Felix Caraballo only, only landed 18 punches in six rounds against Shakur Stevenson, bro. Boxing champ, what did he do? Shakur Stevenson gave him a boxing lesson. He gave him a boxing clinic. Hit that like button, everybody. Subscribe to the channel. Shakur Stevenson, he was dominating the action, bro. He dominated the action, and he looked sharp doing it. As you guys can see, the waves looking sharp like always. Caraballo didn't throw no punches, but JC Caraballo in the beginning of that, in the beginning of that fight, Caraballo came out, you know, very aggressive, and he was trying to utilize that uh that Marcos Maidana type of style in the beginning of that fight. In the beginning of that fight, he was putting pressure on Shakur Stevenson, and Shakur Stevenson, he was able to make his adjustments immediately. You know. You know what I mean? Shakur got, he said, Shakur got skills, no doubt, but let's pump the brakes. Man, that kid got great skills. Shout out to Coco the Don. Coco the Don in the building. Hey, yo, it's your boy, Coco the Don. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel ASAP. You know what I mean? With them uh, deep waves, ocean waves, you heard me? Let's go. Fresh BX the Don, you know what I mean? He said, he said, y'all don't want to see the step back from baby May. Man, shout out to Fresh BX, bro. We out here. Fresh BX in the building. Put your X's up, bro. Representing, you heard? Hey, man, I want to know what y'all think about Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury real quick. Before we get into this uh, debate, before we get into the debate between um, Shakur Stevenson, you know, before we get into the Shakur Stevenson, Pernell Whitaker uh, comparison, I want to know from y'all, man, what y'all think about Tyson Fury and um, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua agreeing to fight against each other verbally. They got a verbal agreement. Shakur pillow fisted. <clears throat> I wouldn't say that, Coco, because dude, he knocked him out. You remember with those body shots? Shakur Stevenson was so smart, bro. Like he knew he wasn't going going to be able to knock him out with those headshots. He knew it. He knew those headshots wasn't going to do it. So he started bringing it to the body. You know what I mean? Start throwing those hooks to the body, and got him out of there, bro. You know he had the presence of mind. Shakur Stevenson had the presence of mind to, to start going to the body, bro. And then he got him out of there. Boxing champ, what's up, bro? Um, but yeah. what's up, my boy? What up, what up? But, but yeah, the, what I think about the Anthony Joshua and the the, the Fury fight, I, I have AJ by knockout, but you know, we but we don't know. Um, as we saw that Fury is not a one trick pony because he he was able to knock out um 
he was able to knock out Wilder in the, the, the last fight and the second fight outboxed him. I think Fury won, but it's yeah, not so, the end of that. So you got Anthony Joshua knocking out Tyson Fury, am I correct? Yeah. yeah. Me, me and you got the same pick, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, me and you got that same pick, bro. Like, mm -hmm. me too. I think, I think personally, um, Anthony Joshua is too much for Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua, he shows us different aspects to his game. He can knock you out. He can outbox people like he did against, um, like he did against Andy Ruiz in that, um, in that second fight. And, um, man, I think Joshua got the better resume, of course. Anthony Joshua with big wins. He knocked out Dylan White. Anthony Joshua. He beat Andy Ruiz. He knocked out Vladimir Klitschko. He knocked out Alexander Joseph Povetkin. Parker. Huh? Joseph Parker. Yeah, and he beat Joseph Parker. He knocked out Alexander Povetkin, and he knocked out Dylan White. You know what I mean? So I got to give um, credit when credit is due. But, you know, Tyson Fury um, is a is a big fight. And just to let the people know, you know, um, hey, mama. just to let the people know, guys, it's a lot of rumors going on in the sport of boxing right now that uh listen there's a lot of rumors in the sport of boxing saying that uh the wbc they're trying to elevate the wbc are trying to elevate tyson fury to the franchise title so possibly tyson fury and deontay wilder can go straight to this uh to this fight you know if tyson fury can get the franchise belt so uh, there's a lot of rumors about that, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, Make I sure y'all hit that like button. I heard go that ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I heard that from Barbershop. But I, 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 don't, I, I don't. For, for real, yeah, man. Barbershop, he got a good point there, man. The WBC, you know, they, these guys got a lot of power, and they can do pretty much whatever they want to do. They, you know, Deontay Wilder. You know, I know Deontay Wilder is going to beat Tyson Fury in that third fight. I know he's going to beat him. So they're trying to they're trying to avoid Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury is trying to duck the trilogy but, at the moment. But like they say, you can't teach your old dog new tricks. And he always depends on that right hand. So I don't know. <laughs> hey, man, I think uh, Deontay Wilder is going to knock out Tyson Fury. That's why Tyson Fury is trying to uh, become a, the franchise champion to avoid the fight. You know what I mean? He's trying to find he's trying to find a way to avoid the fight, man. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Um, so what's your thoughts? What's your thoughts on let's switch it up real quick? What's your thoughts on Shakur Stevenson's performance from last night? How did you like it? Um, it was a it was a good it was a good performance. I was I was watching it. It, it was good. He was um he was doing a lot of, of um jabs and he was he was um Going to the body and in the head, but um, I think he let um um. I think he should have been like a little like more slicker and like faster, but he looks slick to me. He only took eighteen punches. Um, you know he beat the man up. He got the stoppage. He was landing great shots. He was landing tremendous combinations and uppercuts, body mm -hmm. shots, and he got the mm -hmm. the stoppage in six rounds. So. You know, to me, Shakur Stevenson had an A-plus performance. Um, appreciate you stopping by. So um, I want you to go back in the uh, chat, and I'm going to let you back in in a little bit. Let me cook up about this Shakur Stevenson, Pernell Whitaker situation real quick, okay? Any any final words to the chat? You want to say anything to the chat? Um, um, peace. For sure. You want to let them hands go? You want to see the fans? Show, you want to show the fans the combinations? You want to show the power? You want to show how you're knocking people out? You know what I mean? Show them what you got. Show them what you got. Let's go combinations. Hand speed, hand speed, uppercut, uppercut. Let's go. Man, that's a future world champion. That's why his name is the boxing champ. You know what I mean? That's why his name is the boxing champ. You know, he's an amateur fighter. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, I might be his next trainer just to let everybody know. There's a lot of uh, talk about me becoming his trainer. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm going to have him right, bro. I'm going to have that kid like Devin Haney. No cap. But Fresh BX says, I don't think it's cool for him to be training Devin. Uh, Richardson Hitchens said that about uh, 
Floyd Mayweather training Devin Haney. But as you guys know, Devin Haney been a part of the money team before Richardson Hitchens, before Javante Davis, before all of those guys. Devin Haney was a part of the money team, you know, when he was eight years old. So, you know, Richardson Hitchens, no matter what he says, you know, it doesn't matter because Floyd Mayweather, ha he has he's been knowing Devin Haney since he was eight years old. So let's get to some of these comments from the people real quick. He said, young boxing champ needs some headphones. Shout out to the boxing champ. You know what I mean? JC, he said, who's more pillow fisted? Tevin Farmer, Gary Russell, or Shakur Stevenson? Hey, man, I think, uh, man, man, that's a great question. I think Tevin Farmer might be the most pillow fisted out of all of them. Tevin Farmer is number one. Number two is Gary Russell. Number three is Shakur Stevenson. To be honest, y'all, man, make sure y'all hit that like button. I don't think Shakur Stevenson is, you know, he probably, he doesn't have the most power, but for sure, he, I don't think he's that pillow fisted, bro. He was landing some, some good shots in there. He was landing some good shots. You know what I mean? Like, especially those body shots. He was going to the body, ripping to the body, and he was making it look easy, man. You know what I mean? He was making it look easy. He landed some big, big shots on the inside. Great uppercuts, great combinations. Man, Shakur Stevenson, he looked spectacular last night. He looked like a young Pernell Whitaker, bro. He showed us the hand speed, the defense, ring generalship, punching power, you name it, all together, bro. The man had a performance for the ages. It was one of the best performances I've seen in a very long time in the sport of boxing. Roly on wrist. Roly on wrist. You heard me? Let's get it popping. Hey, Coco Tyler, pull up, man. Let me holler at young Coco Tyler real quick, bro. You know what I mean? We out here, and we making it do what it do. Smash that like button. Shakur Stevenson with an all-time great performance. All-time great the man looked solid yesterday, bro. He looked solid. He was shining like this ring I got on my finger, bro. He was shining like the diamonds on my ring, bro. You know what I mean? Let's make it happen. Salute to both, both of the Cocos, bro. We got rollies on wrists, bro. Man, crazy wrist wear, bro. Man, my wrist wear is crazy with the Cuban link bracelet on, man. Shakur Stevenson was shining last night. Combinations, punches and bunches. Ring generalship, hand speed, hand speed. He said, H, you doing fights tomorrow? Man, I might, I might, JC. I'm thinking about it. It was some, man, look like some bums on the schedule, bro. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm not really interested in those fights, but I, I might have to do it. You know what I mean? Might as well do it, bro. You know what I mean? Hit the like button. Shakur Stevenson is the next Pernell Whitaker. Listen, let me break it down for you why he's the next Pernell Whitaker. You talking about skills, you know what I mean? Skills to pay the bills, Shakur Stevenson. Hand speed, you know what I mean? Punches and bunches. A great defense. Shakur Stevenson has a great defense. You know, Pernell Whitaker was an Olympic gold medalist. Pernell Whitaker was an Olympic gold medalist. Shakur Stevenson was an Olympic silver medalist. You know what I mean? Shakur Stevenson. 5'8". He's 5'8", with a 68-inch 60, reach. Shakur Stevenson, he's 5'8", with a 68-inch reach. Pernell Whitaker was 5'6", with a 69-inch reach. Very close on the tail of the tape. You know what I mean? When you talk about ring IQ, ring IQ, ring generalship, hand speed. You know what I mean? Great defense. You know what I mean? It's almost identical, bro. I thought I would never see the, the next Pernell Whitaker until I seen Shakur Stevenson fight last night, bro. Shakur Stevenson, he proved all the doubters wrong last night, bro. The man showed us why he's one of the best young fighters. D. Hodges, pull up. Yo, D. Hodges, don't worry about, you know, the cussing or anything, bro. Just come on to the panel. You know what I mean? Come on, D. Hodges. Cook up with me. Cook up with me, D. Hodges. Don't even worry about it, bro. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Everybody hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, bro. You know what I mean? It is what it is, man. I'm, I'm not worried about it, bro. You know what I mean? 
Forget it, bro. You know what I mean? Let everybody be comfortable. I want everybody to be comfortable. D. Hodges, hop on the panel, my brother. Let's get it going. Shout out to the LDBC, bro. Shout out to the mighty, mighty LDBC, bro. We out here. You know what I mean? Shakur Stevenson is a southpaw. And guess what? Pernell Whitaker was a southpaw. Both of them, Olympians. Shakur, Stephen, Shakur Stevenson, an Olympian. Pernell Whitaker, an Olympian. You know what I mean? Both of them southpaws. For sure. D. Hodges, pull up, man. Let's get it going. You know what I mean? Let's get it going. TJ4 says, he said, Rob Z. Ramirez got like 15 gold medals. He was impressive too last night. Oh, he won last night. Did he win? Or somebody tell me he got knocked out. Did he win or what? Yo, what up, D? Uh, chill on my brother. How are you? How your day been? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. Man, good to have you on the panel. D Hodges, man. I'm, I'm sorry about yesterday, but you know what? I can't control what happens. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, my brother. I want you to be comfortable on the panel. Oh and if you know, I, I am. I just I was drunk. See, no, it's drunk. cool. It's cool, D. Just be yourself, man. I want you to be yourself, bro. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to push people away from the show. You know, I, I want everybody to be comfortable in the, in the chat. I want people to be comfortable on the panel. So just do yeah, you. No, no, I know you was comfortable. I just didn't want to get your show flagged when I'm yeah, like, just, oh, because I, I kind of cool, thought dude. it was I, I, my, in my feelings. I'm like, damn, this might be my fault. I'm the only one <laughs> that really was swearing. So I'm like, let me get off here. I don't want to. Get your nah, channel in trouble. Nah, it's cool, D, because uh, we can't control it. You know what I mean? I think it's, it has something to do with YouTube because on on that UFC video, like you know, you was you was talking the way you wanted to talk. Everybody was comfortable. Everybody was talking, and the show, you know, it went through. The show didn't get flagged or anything. So I'm thinking it's just something to do with YouTube, my brother. So don't even worry about it. You know what I mean? If you want to cuss, cuss, man. You know what I mean? I'm not worried about it. Let's just let's keep it going. You know what I mean? Let's keep it going. I want Fresh BX to be comfortable in the chat. I want you guys just to be yourselves. And the man, at the end of the day, it's only YouTube. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, bro. You know what I mean? Let's but go. Thing, uh, about the thing, I say Shakur is more like Bud Crawford, though. Because, I mean, it's hard to put anybody with Parnell because he's not as elusive. Parnell, he was a very elusive, like Loma Chico was kind of more closer to Parnell, the way he bobs, weaves, duck, dips, moves. Like, he, he like, it's hard to hit him. I say Shakur is more like Bud Crawford, just a straight dog that could box. And that's why Bud's training him. Bud sees himself in him. Well, that's uh, right. yeah, for sure, I respect, I definitely respect your opinion. Um, you know, D. Hodges says that, uh, he says that Shakur Stevenson reminds him of Terrence Crawford. Me, I feel like Shakur Stevenson reminds me of Pernell Whitaker, just you know, with his Olympic background. D. Hodges, um, let me speak, uh, let me spit some facts for you. Uh, let me read this comment by Fresh BX real quick. Fresh BX, he says, uh, he come from money, he said, I'm coming from nothing, so giving me that knowledge and that opportunity is just helping a kid that's coming from nothing. Get, Get to that level. You know what I mean? And uh, Fresh BX also says, and I know Floyd come from the same place, Richardson Hitchens. But, you know, uh, Fresh BX, uh, like I said, Floyd Mayweather has been having a relationship with Devin Haney ever since he was a little kid. So, uh, you know, no matter what Shakur, uh, not, no matter what Richardson Hitchens and Javante Davis says, Floyd Mayweather is going to continue to train Devin Haney because Devin Haney has been a part of the money team before all of them. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. You know, they have to get over it. You know what I mean? If they got a problem with Devin Haney, Devin Haney is willing to fight Javante Davis. Devin Haney, Devin Haney is willing to make that fight happen next. So if Javante got a problem with it, you know, stop cherry picking against a smaller Leo Santa Cruz. You know what I mean? And fight Devin Haney. We all know that Javante Davis was ranked number one in the WBC when he moved up to 135 pounds. And he chose to go the WBA route to fight Gamboa. You know what I mean? So let's just fight. You know, we don't have to talk about it. They don't have to, you know, make comments and gossip on the Internet like they've been doing on Twitter, using Twitter fingers and things of that nature. If they want to make the fight happen, Devin Haney's willing to fight anybody. So uh, Richardson Hitchens, 
All of those guys can make it happen, bro. You know what I mean? Let's fight. That's all. It, you got a problem with Floyd Mayweather training Devin Haney? Fight him then. But uh, back to go back on to D. Hodges' uh, comments. D. Hodges says Shakur Stevenson reminds him of Terrence Crawford. For me, Shakur Stevenson reminds me of Pernell Whitaker. And I'm going to uh, spit facts right now. Um, first of all, Shakur Stevenson is an Olympian just like Pernell Whitaker. Pernell Whitaker was – Pernell Whitaker – he was the um, Olympic gold medalist. He won the Olympic gold. Olympic gold medalist, Pernell Whitaker. Shakur Stevenson, an Olympic silver medalist. Both of them are um, Olympians. Um, second, Shakur Stevenson is um, a southpaw, just like Pernell Whitaker. Uh, Terrence Crawford is a southpaw, but Terrence Crawford is also a switch hitter. Pernell Whitaker didn't switch from uh, southpaw to orthodox. Pernell Whitaker was just... A southpaw, and he stays southpaw. Second, I mean, third of all, Shakur Stevenson is um, Shakur Stevenson is five eight, five eight. Per Pernell Whitaker was five six. Also, Shakur Stevenson got a sixty eight inch reach, sixty eight inch reach, and uh, Pernell Whitaker had a sixty nine inch reach, and Terrence Crawford has a seventy four inch reach, and uh, Terrence Crawford is more of a puncher in my eyes than uh, Shakur Stevenson. Terrence Crawford, you know, he's been knocking a lot of guys out. He has a 72-72% knockout ratio. And Shakur Stevenson is not the biggest puncher, just like uh, Pernell Whitaker. Pernell Whitaker was more of a technician in the ring. And I feel like Shakur Stevenson is similar to that. You know what I mean? And as far as his defense is concerned, Shakur Stevenson's defense is much better than Terrence Crawford's uh, defense. Shakur Stevenson doesn't take any punches. He doesn't take any punishment. And we've seen, uh, of course, Terrence Crawford was famous. To, uh, he's famous to getting rocked. He got rocked and wobbled against Gamboa. You know what I mean? Terrence Crawford, he looked uh, kind of shaky in his fight against um, in his fight against Mean Machine. Terrence Crawford came out slow. And also Terrence Crawford against Hank Lundy came out slow as well. Terrence Crawford's a very slow start, a uh, very slow starter. As well, and Shakur Stevenson, he comes out blazing from round number one, just like Pernell Whitaker. You know, we can agree to disagree. Um, D Hodges, any thoughts on my comments right there, my brother? Oh, no, you're 100% right. But I just say, I just because he don't move like Parnell, like I'm just saying, just by the movement, like the slickness, the you know what I'm saying, like he's not as slick. That's why I can't put him. It's very hard. I can't even put Floyd next to Parnell because Floyd wasn't slick. He just knew how to block real well. It's very hard to compare people to Parnell just by the way he make you like Prince Nassim. Like them people that just like they can, you're swinging at them and they're just missing, missing. They dancing, sticking their face out, pulling their face back putting their hands down, shaking that. Yo, that's embarrassing. And you're trying your hardest to punt this man, but you can't. For sure, so, for sure. Cornell was, man, he was very sharp, my brother. And to be honest with you, I didn't think that, that there could be another Pernell Whitaker until I watched Shakur Stevenson last night. And to me, Shakur Stevenson, he pretty much proved all the doubters wrong last night. It was a spectacular performance of my brother. And I felt like um, Shakur Stevenson, man, Looked great last night. What, what was your thoughts on Shakur Stevenson's performance from last night? Just in my opinion, I will, like I said, I will put Lomo more closer to Parnell. Just by movement, not by win records, but Lomo is a two-time gold medalist. And the way Lomo moved, the way he can step around and turn you and spin you and make people quit because they can't hit him. So I would say Lomachenko is more closer to the Parnell Whitaker than Shakur. Just his movement, just movement wise. For sure. Yo, um, <clears throat> what you what you thought about Shakur Stevenson's performance last night? Um, how did you like it? And uh where how would you grade it like from a scale from one to ten or like A, B, C, or whatever, like A, you know what like, I mean? Hey, he wiped the dude, it's no he wiped him. Like that's like if somebody get wiped, you can't give him nothing but an A. He wiped dude. But I want to see him fight that Ramirez guy because that guy seemed all right, though. After I told you I was so mad, I put my head down to roll up, looked up. First round knockout fight over. That dude looks ill. Um, 
the um the one that beat him in the Olympics. He looks pretty good. Ramirez, Ramirez who beat Shakur Stevenson in the Olympics. Yeah, for the gold. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, man, he knocked that dude out quick. I'm like, wow. I didn't even get a chance to roll my blunt, and the fight's over. <laughs> Oh, that was so funny. But other than that, the only the only stinky fight was the Cortavius Cash fight. All the other fights, I give them A and Bs. But Cortavius Cash fight, oh, that fight was so horrible. Oh my god! So that was the only bad fight I could truly say out the whole card. So Shakur Stevenson, he impressed you last night. Am I right or wrong? Of course he did. He won and got the stoppage easily. How did you like the fact that Shakur Stevenson, you know, he made his adjustments and he went to the body to get the knockout instead of being a headhunter. He went straight to the body and he broke him down and he stopped him. What did you think about him, you know, having the, you know, having the, pre the presence of mind to go to the body to get the stoppage? Oh, yeah, I respect him. And you can see every time I knew he was going down because every time he hit dude in the body, you can see. And when somebody, you can tell when it hurts because they get like a certain look in their face when that punch connects to the body. They get like this look like, oh, my God, what I just get hit with. And he kept hitting dude with it. I knew it was just a matter of time. I knew it was. He, he did excellent body punch, and I got to give him that. For sure, for sure. Yo, he did. He did a great job in the ring. Uh, man, I, I got to give him an A plus for me. Like from what He's I said, it's definitely an A. Yeah, he whitewashed, dude. I, there's no flaws in that fight. That's definitely an A. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Stone Bone Boxing. Yo, that's the biggest man. That's matter of fact, that's Team Terrence Crawford right there. Team Bud Stone Bone in the building. Stone Bone, if you available, man, make sure you you know what I'm saying you can hop on the panel. And uh, man, join the conversation. And uh, Stone Bowl Boxing says Shakur got cat instincts. He will be the next Terrence Crawford. So Stone Bowl Boxing agrees with you on that. He agrees oh, with yeah. you. Peace That's to my cool. brother Stone Bowl, bro. Go and ahead. Russ, I'm sorry, D. sorry, Shakur's a dog because he can get into a dog fight. Don't forget, he had dog fights. He's a dog like Crawford. Shakur's a dog. He don't just give up. He fights. He'll take one to give one. Oh, yeah. That's why I just, I compare him to Crawford, and I think that's why Crawford does so good with training him, because they kind of are all alike. And he got Andre Ward. Ha, oh, that nigga got two masters, nigga. <laughs> two masters. So he getting all the knowledge in the world. You can't even buy that knowledge from Andre Ward and Bud. Man, Shakur's going to wipe them all. Maybe not Haney, because Haney got Floyd and he's disciplined. But Tank is going to be the worst, though. Because like I said, I have no confidence in Tank until he showed me he could make weight and be disciplined. Other than that, Tank is just going to be one of them fighters that just fought. In my opinion, because he probably ain't training, probably like 180 now. <laughs> got to drop back down to 130. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. He has too many partying videos and not enough training videos, so. I hopefully I love Tank, but he got to he got to sign, man. I love Tank, but get more discipline, dude. You getting millions of dollars here? I'm getting mills. I'm I swear to God, I'm in that gym. I'm on that diet. I'm what? You getting mills a fight? I definitely will be disciplined for sure. Let me get to the comment. Fresh BX says he said I hope he don't rather train somebody from the other side. He said. Then train his other fighter. You know what I'm saying? His other fighter, Richardson Hitchens. Listen, listen. I got to be honest, bro. Man, hit that like button, everybody. What up, Danny the Great? You know what I mean? What up, Danny the Great? What's good? I just want to say this. You good, Danny the Great? Let me, you know what I'm saying? Danny the Great, don't worry about it. Let me give you a wrench back. You know what I mean? Uh, Danny the Great is cool, man. Danny the Great, you know, sometimes, you know what I mean? I'm not sure what happened. Let me just give you a wrench so you can feel free. You know what I mean? Hey, listen. Devin Haney was with the money team before all of those dudes, bro. Devin Haney was with the money team before all of them. I got videos of Floyd Mayweather, you know what I'm saying, talking about how his youngest fighter, Devin Haney, turned pro. When Devin Haney turned pro, you know what I mean? I remember that. 
I remember that. And Floyd Mayweather was like, my youngest fighter turned professional. His name is Devin Haney. So what you got to say about that, BX? You know what I mean? Floyd Mayweather was saying how Devin Haney was a part of the money team, bro. That's what Mayweather said. Let's get it popping. Believe me, the only reason why he picked Haney now is because Tank was going to jail, beating up, beating up women. Like, you can't deal with nobody like that. Like, all the stuff he's going through, it's like, why am I wasting my time with this dude? He's a waste of time, and he's in the news all the time. So I feel like, I guarantee you, if Tank was dedicated and was, like, just straight going, I bet you Floyd would dedicate himself to him. But how can you dedicate somebody going to jail for beating up women and clubbing and partying you can't you can't train nobody like that they're not listening to you so i feel floyd get rid of you let's pick up haney he's much more disciplined more easier to deal with so i feel floyd and i love tank so i'm not dog to tank at all but come on now if you're a parent you get tired you gotta let your kid go <laughs> i can't i can't stop you no more you gotta go okay first uh -huh. says he says i hope he didn't uh, he said i hope he don't Rather train somebody from the other side than train his own fighter, Richardson Hitchens. Devin Haney was Floyd Mayweather's fighter before anybody, bro. That's what I'm telling you. Before Floyd Mayweather even had any one of those dudes, Devin Haney was in the gym since he was eight years old, training with Floyd Mayweather Sr., Roger Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather, all of them. Come on, BX, bro. De Floyd Mayweather closer to Devin Haney than he is with any one of them dudes. He knew Devin Haney since he was a kid. You know what I mean? Let's get it popping. Look, Stonebone Boxing says, Devin nickname used to be New Money after Money Mayweather. You know what I mean? He said he was the new money. You know what I mean? Let's get it popping. Let me look at Coco's comment real quick. I see Coco had a strong comment right here. I want to see. Coco the Don says, he said, Andre Ward retired undefeated and has a nice, comfortable contract with ESPN. Is managing Shakur Stevenson, one of the youngest superstars in the business. That's true. That's true. Andre Ward, bro, was one of my favorite fighters. You know what I mean? Yo, Stone Bone. This is how I feel, Stone Bone. I'm going to be honest. I think that, uh, I think, to be honest, that uh, uh, Devin Haney, Devin Haney reminds me of Floyd Mayweather and Shakur Stevenson. He reminds me of Pernell Whitaker. I I like Terrence Crawford. I think Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford is a very good fighter, but I feel like Shakur Stevenson defense is is much better than Crawford's. You know what I mean? I think Terrence Crawford got more power than Shakur Stevenson. Like Sh Terrence Crawford knocking people out with headshots. And you seen yesterday, Shakur Stevenson, he couldn't knock him out going to the face. He couldn't knock him out with those headshots. So Shakur Stevenson, he brought his, his punches to the body. You know what I mean? I don't think Shakur Stevenson is much. He's, he's not a puncher like Terrence Crawford. But I feel like Shakur Stevenson, you know what I mean? He got better defense than Crawford. I think Crawford got more power than Terrence Crawford. Shakur Stevenson got more power. No, Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford got more power than Shakur Stevenson. And I feel like Shakur Stevenson has a better defense than Terrence Crawford. But they're both good fighters, bro. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they're both great fighters. But you know, Terrence Crawford, he's more, he got way more power, bro. Terrence Crawford got power, bro. He be knocking people out. You know what I mean? Shout out to King Mitch. You know what I mean? Shout out to everybody in the chat. Yo, so uh why don't somebody else join us, man? Why is it only me? Like, let at least have a third person. Like, at least three people's cool. Why ain't nobody want to come on? This is one we'll show see. that JFL gonna pull up. So hopefully yeah. JFL will pull up later. You know, yeah. I'm not sure so, they're gonna the link for anybody so that wanna enjoy hop this in. show. There's no other show where you can call in like this. So I'm enjoying the show because I can call in and talk. A lot of shows, you just got to listen to them talk. You can't talk to them. But I like this okay. show because you can call in. I love this show. But get to the comments, bro. It, um, it's love, D. You already know, man. Hey, Fresh BX, I hear, hear the question he's talking about. He said, if he part of the money team, why he not signed to the money team? You know what I mean? He's He is a part of the money team. Bro, Devin Haney signed with Eddie Hearn and Matron Bachman in the zone because they offer him the best contract. You know what I mean? And Floyd Mayweather, you, is Floyd Mayweather being a hater that Devin Haney signed with Eddie Hearn? No, he's not a hater. De Devin Haney is still a part of the money team. The money team is a gym, the TMT gym. He's still a part of the TMT gym.
Devin Haney was he was a part of the money team. You know, he was getting promoted by Floyd Mayweather in his first couple fights. We're gonna get in, we gonna get into it. And Dongo, come on. So how you think they feel about Cortavius Cash? Because he's TMT too. How you think they feel about him? <laughs> Oh, man. He, he might be one of the J. Leon loves or something like that. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> oh, stone bone pulling up. Is that the real stone? Yo, what up, Stone? Stone bone, what's popping? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you good. What's good? Oh, man, just. Just got back from the beach, man. I he said ain't nobody on. I was like, let me jump on with my guy real quick, man. I see y'all. You cooking over there tonight? For sure, for sure, man. Hey, Shakur Stevenson looked great last night, my brother. How did you like his performance from last night, uh, Stonebone? How did you like it? Oh man, it, I was, I was, I was. When I heard how much he got paid for that, I was even more impressed. They said he got damn near half half a meal for that, man. That, that tune up to beat up on that guy, man. So his speed, timing, defense, everything was on point. You can see, look, when you nail with the movement, Floyd with the the body, the in and out, the, the jab to the stomach, but that that knockout shot, that's when he learned from Bud in the gym, man. That's the Indongo undisputed shot. You know what I mean? That's that you you faint, but what Shakur did was threw that hook to the body. And he turned on him, fainted him, and when he threw the uh, threw that little wide hook, you saw he went under it and just uh, dug that shot to the body. That's the that's the undisputed Crawford shot. He didn't get the second one off. All he needed was one. Bud hit him down, go with two. So this that's what you call learning in the gym. And I seen what he was talking about. Uh, with, with you got Andre Ward, Crawford, James Prince. You know what I mean? He got the uh, his grandfather's a solid dude. His coach K got a real a real camp, real young fighters. Yeah, you know I mean, he got everything he need. Just stay focused, and he gonna be that guy. For sure, yo, man, that dude was impressive last night. I'm gonna be honest, like I wasn't the biggest Shakur Stevenson fan at first, but after watching him last night, I'm like, yo, this kid is the truth, bro. Like, you know, um, he went against Felix Caraballo last night, and Felix Caraballo, if I'm not mistaken, a Puerto Rican fighter. You know, who only landed 18 punches in six <laughs> rounds. So Shakur Stevenson defense is up to par, bro. I think, man, the kid is very talented. Um, the sky is the limit for him. So, you know, I want to know uh what's your thoughts. I seen seen you in the chat. You said that Shakur reminds you of Terrence Crawford. For me, he reminds me of Purnell. And I know you mentioned uh Floyd. You know, um, what fighter do you think he resembles the most out of all of those three from Terrence Crawford? Pernell Whitaker and Floyd Mayweather. Right, right now, uh, you going you uh, you might not believe it, but right now, he looks more like Tito than anybody. He got a defensive style like a Pernell, but the offense, he looks like Tito. He got the same body build as a Tito, and I believe he got the hand speed. He's getting stronger as he uh, work on getting his balance, sitting down on his punches. I, I, I'm looking at him right now as closer to a Tito than than maybe a Pernell. The defense is Pernell because he's had 18 punches in six rounds. Come on, bro. You can't even – dudes be dudes be knocking dudes out in the first round and they be getting hit 18 times. So you went six rounds, knocked the guy out with a body shot. You know what I mean? that that I'm, I don't know, though. When we think you don't got power, it's easier – to me, if you deliver the right shot, it's easier to stop somebody to the body. And you see, he he was hurting him to the head, but he that's a solid, solid big head dude. So he's like, all right, let me take it downstairs. He start hooking to the outside of the body. And once his arms went back to guard the outside of the body, he started going up the middle. And that those body punches are savage, man. That he he looking like a young Tito right now, man. Uh, I think he'll end up being better than a Tito. I think Tito sometimes didn't take boxing serious because he was great. And, you know I mean, that's when he had – well, he was cheated. He got cheated against uh, – what's the name? But those other fights, man, he – I don't think he loved it. Or maybe, he, you know, sometimes when you're so good, you just become lax, you know. And I think that that's what Tito would. I don't think Shakur going to have that problem. He got the right people around him. He hungry. He want to be great. 
And I say his trajectory is a Terrence Crawford undisputed multiple division weight champion. But right now he looked like Tito. Like Felix Trinidad Tito? Yes, sir. For sure, for sure. I definitely respect your opinion. Yeah, my look, at his, look at his look at his arm length, look at his shoulders, look at his neck. I mean, very similar build to a Tito. Very quick. Uh Tito was shit. They they when you're looking at their trajectories, he's on a the fast. He's already been a champion. He's already trying to unify. So that's why I put him in the the reins of the Crawford as far as the skill, the talent. All he once he sit down and get his power together, then we can, you know what I mean, put him in that that level with Terrence Crawford. Right now I got him around Tito Pernell. That Pernell is you right on with that one though. That defense, how he was moving, the shot was coming, he was rolling them, ducking them, slipping them. Every kind of anything you need defensively, he did it. So I'm I'm liking that Pernell uh comparison. For sure, bro. Like, man, rest in peace to Pernell Whitaker. Pernell Whitaker was one of the best fighters that I've ever seen. Um, you know, just as far as the the young fighters coming up in the game, like you got Devin Haney, Devin Haney, uh Shakur Stevenson, uh Tiafimo Lopez, Javante Davis, Ryan Garcias. Um, how do you rank those? Like who do you like the best out of, out of all of them? And, you know, just in order, out if you of, can. Well, just – well, I'll put uh, 1A and 1B. Well, I'll start at 135 because I think Shakur and Devin are the two best. We're going to look at – that's going to be a, something like a, a Floyd and a Sugar Shane type thing. It's going to be two great black fighters at, at the same time. Shakur is a little bit smaller. Not, not really as far as height. He only about a half inch shorter. But I'm just saying, like, where he's fighting right now. And Devin, to me, at 135, Devin is the best. When I, I just watched what he was working on with Floyd. Did you watch the uh, what Floyd had him working on in the gym? Yeah, Floyd, man, he looked good, bro. That's Man, Floyd I'm almost happy to see that. Floyd I'm sorry to disrupt you, but I'm sorry. Right, right now, Normal's the best at 135. I'm sorry. Until they beat, until they beat him, he's the best. Well, until they beat him. We, I guess we weren't talking about uh, right yeah. now. Well, no, we weren't talking about as far as belt and shit like that. We saying, who do we see standing at the top? Oh, you as a young people? people? Oh, yeah, yeah, the young people. people. The young Loma party. Loma. I got it now, bro. All right. We had the All opportunity right. for Loma to fight Devin, and what happened? Yeah, he don't want to fight that young buck. He much rather try Tio instead. <laughs> I would too. He, he <laughs> gave up that belt. He gave up, his, he gave up his WBC title to avoid Devin Haney. You know, he requested yeah. a franchise belt. Oh, I know that, but still, until you beat him, he's the best. Like Canelo, he you lost. Beat one. him, he won't fight you. You was mandatory to fight him. How can you beat somebody when he won't fight you? That's what I'm saying. Like. I'm I'm at the point where I ain't I'm not a nostalgia dude no more. I ain't I ain't make America great again, dude. I'm I'm let's worry about right now. And if he don't want to fight, I don't care if he was great two years ago. If he don't want to fight Devin, he's scared of Devin. But believe me, I'm not gonna be believe running around. If, 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 like, oh, if, if, if he get past T.O., he's definitely gonna fight him. He's gonna try. But if he gets stopped by T.O., T.O. is his test. Because Tio is way Tio's way. I mean, Devin Haney's way better. So let me test my old self. To Tio too. Listen, he would rather he would rather lose and 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 sneakily get knocked out. Look, he know that if Tio don't knock him out, he's not gonna outbox him. But he knows Devin can outbox him. Devin's faster, bigger, stronger, better defense, better footwork. Lomachenko, look, Lomachenko is a great white fighter. If Lomachenko was black, he would be, he would be around fifth or sixth. No disrespect, I'm just saying. When uh, who was it? Uh, who was the Bulls dude? Uh, Ku coach, wasn't it? Kukoc? Yeah, Tony, Tony Ku coach. Tony Ku coach. He was a great European, great white. Uh, even Vladi Divac, a great European white, but he wasn't no Shaq. He was no. Uh, Tim Duncan, no David Robinson, no motherfucking Patrick Union, Patrick Ewan. He wasn't that, but he was great for what he could do. Tony Kukoc was Lomachenko. He was the great, uh, good score European guy that you had to catch up on him. And once he slowed down a little bit, he wasn't as good. Without Jordan and Pippen, you know what I mean? Kukoc couldn't carry a team. 
So Lomachenko is the goods. He is the unified champion, but you put him in there with a prime 22-year-old Devin Haney, that's trouble. Haney, hey, that's big trouble. I, was, I was just saying like that like T.O. would be a good test because if he can go in there and just dominate T.O., then of course I'll take Haney. T.O.'s the test. If I had to choose... I will test uh, myself uh, with Tio. Would you hate? Would you uh, hate? Lover, I, would you uh, test? Lover, t- you need Lover, even Lover, to try Lopez. Who do you? Lopez. 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 Where do you? Where do you? So, do you think he beat Devin right now? Who Loma? I, yeah. Nah, I don't know. Yeah, I got Devin beating him. I got that's why I feel like that's why Loma is avoiding him, bro. Like Loma already got a loss on his right. He's a good fighter. That's why we want to fight him. You know he already got a loss, but he shows he showed us that he can be beat already. Yeah. But I'm just what saying, don't that seem like a good test for him though? To first. Who you got in the To fight? See, see how I well I do against To because if I can't do nothing against To and I lose, I'm definitely not fighting Devin. To is a better first challenge of the young bucks, you know. In my opinion, I'll well, fight To. Well, 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 yeah, because. Because ahead, uh, you know that if he can stay away from T.O. Punch, he can probably beat T.O. He just got to stay away from from that hard right, and he gonna try to he gonna try to fastball it. If he keep fastballing, Loma gonna time it and just he gonna be like a a, a major league baseball player. He gonna he gonna he gonna either make him go balls or he gonna swing and keep him in play. So T.O. gonna have to be smart. Who who you got in that fight? Uh, well, you got you got T.O. or Loma in that fight? I got Loma. Loma. I got Loma, bro, because... I got me, Loma. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I, you I, got for you. some reason, I just don't think T.O. got... Like, you know, it's going to be like a Harrison and a Charlo. He's just going to box circles around him. Yeah, I agree. I agree with D. Hodges. I agree with D. Hodges on that one, man. He, the, he first fight, the, the first fight, the first fight, the Charlo, because, you know, Charlo came back and stopped him second. But that first fight, yo, Tony Harrison... He was moving crazily. <laughs> All right, see, the second fight, Charlo was losing that too. He was getting after he he knocked him down in like the second round, and then he was getting outboxed all the way till pretty much he knocked him out. I was back in Omaha watching that shit on my, at my mom's house, and that was that was a. I thought, man, if he didn't knock him out, he'd lose that fight. He so definitely would have. Overtake him, no. If he stay away from the power, that he know what he can do. I stay away from the power. A pivot, turn on boxing. But is T.O. smart enough to, to figure it out? Is T.O. smart enough to, to not even throw the punch, to feign it, and wait for Lomachenko to turn and then hit him? That's what, uh, if you're smart, you don't, you don't worry about what he's doing. If you can watch his feet or watch his shoulders, you can figure out your position. And most fighters don't realize that his body, he can move and do all of these little funny angles. But if you throw hooks, if you throw – Straight shots, you figure it out. When he going sideways, throw hooks. When he trying to side, do the Mike Tyson, that little side to side sway in, you throw straight shots. And we got to see if T.O. has the IQ to beat a Love and Take yo, yo, That's a close fight to me, I think. I think T.O. young, hungry. If he can catch him, he can hurt him. We seen Linares put him down, so he can be hurt. But I don't know, man. I'm leaning towards Loma in that fight, though. Yo, yo, let me let me hop in and say this, uh, man. To be honest, Stone Bone Boxing, I feel like uh, Loma's gonna outbox Tiafimo Lopez. Like I've seen Tiafimo Lopez, in my eyes, get outboxed against a Japanese bum by the name of Nakatani, who's a nobody that nobody knew, came from Japan, and he was able to outbox Tiafimo Lopez. So I feel like Tiafimo Lopez is always loading up on his shots. He he's looking for the knockout. So if the knockout is not there, what is he gonna do? I feel like Loma is not a stationary target, but you're you right. Loma got hit by uh Linares and went down, but he got back up and he got the stoppage victory. So I just feel like Loma, Loma, he has more tools in his uh more tools in his toolbox. I just think Loma is gonna outbox uh Tiafimo and Loma's you know he's just He's just better. I feel like he's better. Tia Fimo is like he loading up on his shots. And I'm not seeing – and Tia Fimo is flat-footed as well. That's that's another thing. And I remember uh, Devin Haney. Devin Haney was watching – Um, he was watching the the Lomachenko – no, De- Devin Haney was watching Tia Fimo Lopez versus 
uh, the Japanese fighter Nakatani and Devin Haney was like, yo, he's flat footed. He was talking about how Tiafima Lopez is flat footed in a way, kind of like an Adrian Broner. You know what I'm saying? So if he, I think he's a limited fighter, to be honest, uh, just to keep it short and sweet. I feel like Tiafima Lopez is a, he's a limited fighter and he's flat footed. And I think Loma will box circles around him. So is he on that hype job list? I remember last night we was talking about a hype job list. Is he on it? No, nah, nah. I, I wouldn't say he's a hype job. He's a good fighter, but he just he he doesn't, you know, he wants the knockout too bad, bro. He's in falling in love with the knockouts. You got to be able to show me different type of skills like Shakur. Shakur yesterday, bro, that's why I like Shakur so much. Shakur showed us everything. He showed us that he could stand and bang with you. He showed us that he can outbox you, you know, just move, kill you with footwork, kill you with foot movement. And sh Tiafimo Lopez hasn't shown me that he could just box like that, bro. That's what I'm trying to say. He he hasn't yeah. shown me. You know what I'm I saying? I think Loma can stay out the way of it. If he can stay out the way of the power, he can win. And he know that. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a strong believer in the boxer. If you're a smart boxer and you're going against a one trick pony, you know what I mean? That's why uh, that's why Floyd used to always want to fight. People always talk about punchers. But boxers love to fight punchers because that's all that's all he got. That's an easy fight for me. I'm gonna duck, I'm gonna slip, I'm gonna go under, counter, I'm gonna box him all night. And I know that's what Loma is looking at it like. He's the better boxer, he has the experience. Tiffimo only got with like 15 fights, I think, 16 fights, something like that. So Loma might only have uh 20 uh, pro fights, but he got for sure that what 500 amateur fights. So are you looking for the key? You know what I mean? So, I don't know, man. I'll, it's right here on the table. Believe me, Lomo will win as long as they don't get caught. As long as he don't get caught, Lomo wins. But if he get caught, <laughs> boy, I don't know about how that chin is. So, Because nobody really get to hit him like that well with. So, I want to see if Teal get that shot and if Lomo could take it. So. It all depends upon as long as Blomo stay away from that power, he'll do just fine. Just don't get too cute. <laughs> get too cute and get clipped. But I still got Lomo, though, in my opinion. For sure. I got a question for uh, for um, my brother, uh, Stonebone Boxing. Yo, Stonebone, um, so as far as Devin Haney and uh, Shakur Stevenson, who you got number one in the future? Like, I mean, they're not going to fight each other because they're in two different weight classes. Devin Haney is about, I believe he's almost, uh, well, he was two weight classes bigger bigger than Shakur. Shakur had his first fight at yeah. 130. So, uh, I mean, how do you rank them? Who, who's number one? Who's number two for you? Man, that's that right there is like splitting hairs. I yeah, you can't other. answer that question. <laughs> That's a possible answer. Nobody knows that one. The only one that knows is God. <laughs> but I, that's hey, all. Yeah, we can pontificate, though. We can pontificate. Me and H Money been called. We done, is we done called see, a couple of young guys that are champions now. Yeah, you know I mean, I was trying to convince him on Shakur back then. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, knew he, I knew he'd get to him. You know, I knew all he had to do was see, he wanted to see more. And, and nowadays, with with the matchmaking and the shit going on, we need to see more sometimes from from these guys. And Shakur is de uh, delivering. Devin, I man, oh man, I I don't I, I don't I I guess I got a bias because I you know I mean I, I'm friends with Crawford. I know Shakur personally, so maybe I got a bias. I I met Devin. I met him with Bud before, um, but Devin's a welterweight. Devin is. Him and Bud is right now. Devin is the same size as Bud is. Like when we was together, uh, I'm on I'm on the video with uh, Eddie Hearn. I'm at that. I'm there when Eddie Hearn had them face off. You know what I mean, you can pan through the back through that video when uh, Devin and Bud face off. I'm I'm about like three people to his right, and uh, Eddie Hearn had him. Devin, they was like Devin. He was like, damn Devin, you Devin, you're a welterweight right now. Like so, <sighs> Devin got man. I don't know, man. I think Devin is. I think, uh, bro. I can't. Bring, I can't. I don't know. One hand, <laughs> one feet. One. I yeah. guess I'm gonna take some support because I know him. But I ain't gonna be surprised if in in three, three four years, 
Devin is a, a, a major champion at 147, and Sakura is a unified champion at 140. You know what I mean? They're going to always be within a division of two. You know what I mean? It's going to be just like when Flo- they was telling Floyd to fight Shane. Remember, Shane had moved to 54, became a champion. And they say, oh, Floyd, you at 40, go on, go to 47. Oh, you got to fight Shane. So that divisions don't be mattering, man. He's going to end up having to – they're going to end up calling for that fight, man. And, man, I, that, I'll pay I'll pay $100 pay-per-view and buy a ticket to see that. You know what I mean? Just to, TV, just to record it on my TV, I'll buy the pay-per-view, and I'm going to have to be there. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, for, for sure, for sure. I want to know everybody in the chat. Everybody in the chat, bro, who who y'all think is better, Shakur Stevenson or Devin Haney? You know what I'm saying? Who's number one, Shakur Stevenson number one or Devin Haney number one? Or is Shakur Stevenson number two? How you and got De- it, hey? How you got it, money? Man, that's a good That's a good question. Like, I, you know me. I'm Like you said, you a little bit biased for your guy. You know what I mean? I'm a little bit biased for Devin. I'm going to be honest. I got Devin Haney number one. I got Shakur Stevenson number two on my list. But you can't uh-huh. you can't go wrong with either or. I feel like it's like apples and oranges. You know what I mean? It depends on you know yeah. which one you like. You know what I mean? But for me though, a stone yeah, bone. You called it though. You, I, 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 I'll say this though. You you ain't just being biased because before he had before he became the other Mister the Zone. You know what I mean? Before he signed with the Zone, you were still saying like, look, this you. you know what I mean, when he was down there fighting in Mexico. We was calling on the boxing voice, talking about him and shit. Like, you always been honest about that. So, man, it's hard for me to. Devin is the truth, though. Like, and he working with Floyd. I don't why. I seen some of the fighters was jealous, and then um, Floyd came out and said, "Man, Tank ain't never fighting Devin." <laughs> yup, he did say that. Yup. Uh, he said Devin is going to one forty, Tank at one thirty. And just if, if we talk, if we we talking brother to brother here. Tank is not a 135 pounder. Like he could beat some guys at 135, but the difference between 130 and 135 is Devin Haney at 5'9 and Tank at 5'4. You know what I mean? They say Tank 5'5, five, five, but I've seen that dude in person. My girl, my my daughter is taller than Tank, bro. So you know what I mean, my daughter is senior in high school now, and she's taller than Tank. So that dude ain't five. He ain't five four, or he might be five four. He ain't five five. So that's a four inch tall difference, like four five inch reach difference. Like he don't need to be fighting at one thirty five. He he definitely don't need to fight no Devin Haney. Like <laughs> I don't care what happened at sparring when Devin Haney was sixteen. I don't care. You talking about a grown, a young grown ass man, and and Devin Haney might put hands on Tank right now. It'd be. It would it would look wrong. It would look like somebody, son, dad beating up their son. Just far as the size, you know what I mean. When Devin was sixteen, he was a little smaller. You know what I mean. He was closer to Tank size, but right now, man, Devin busting out the seams at one. Devin ain't even fought at one forty, and he busting out the seams at one forty. You know what I mean? Like, but the difference between Devin is he disciplined enough to stay at one thirty five, while Tank ain't disciplined enough to stay at one thirty. And that's that's where the problem is. And I think that's what Floyd got a problem with. But everybody trying to say, oh, he he trying to make them dudes beef. How, man, this is a this is a grown man business. I'm paying you millions of dollars, Tank. If I ain't even paying Devin, how am I, what's your problem? You know what I mean? That's just like when uh when you draft a quarterback. You know what I mean? If you're the quarterback and they draft the quarterback, that means you better step it up or ship it out. You're a grown man. You're making big money. Ain't no time to play. You know what I mean? Like, t- Floyd should be able to say uh, Devin can beat anybody at 130 and 135. He can't say that just because of missing weight outside of the ring issue. It's like, I mean, he don't want to be made a liar, but he ain't turned his back on Tank. They haven't stopped Tank from uh, – they haven't stopped him from fighting. They haven't stopped paying him. And remember when Tank had his first title shot, you remember we talked about it on the Boxing Voice. He said – Mayweather trying to uh, set me up. He trying to set me up with this title fight. Like, what? I thought that's what, you know what I mean? His first title fight, go back yep. on Twitter. I remember against Pedrazzi. Yeah. He talking about, he, they trying to set me up. Trying to set me up. I ain't, <laughs> he like wasn't ready for the title shot. So, I don't know, bro. Like, 
I don't tank tank is tank a great fighter, great great power, great puncher. I don't know if he's a great boxer though. You know what I mean? Like I haven't seen it yet. Like I I you remember when Tank was talking shit about Wilder talking about oh you fight like a girl. Yeah, he, he said he fought like a Tom, a Tom, a Tom, yeah, a Tom, Tom girl. Boy, whatever. Yeah, Tom. <laughs> and, and my, Tom boy, my, yeah, Tom my, boy. My, you right. right. My whole argument was Tank. What they say about Wilder, they say about you. He's just a knockout punch. If he can't knock you out, he can't outbox you. That's the same thing. They, but they've never said Wilder was out of shape or Wilder. He a heavyweight. He don't got got to make a certain weight. But you never heard him being out of shape. And Tank, you have. It's like. You don't need to be talking, running your mouth about Bud Crawford and about Wilder when and and when the people talk about you, they say the same thing that they said about Wilder. He's just a hard puncher. You know what I mean? When you talk to why you think Lomachenko been calling Tank name for three years, but ain't he won't even whisper that in Haney name. Facts, facts. Yeah, even Tia Fimo, he look at Tank and Tia Fimo as hard punchers. He done fought probably two hundred of them in the amateurs. Guys just trying to knock his head off. You just feel his body energy. You can feel him wing his shots and just keep punching him in the stomach, and he'll be tired by the fifth round. You know what I mean? So Tank got to sharpen up before he even worry about Devin. Man, he don't even need to worry about Devin, man. Floyd, remember, Floyd offered him to, to train. Floyd offered him to come to Vegas. He offered to be the part-time second, third trainer after Calvin, uh, Coach Calvin. So, and plus – Last thing, real quick. Uh, when Calvin Ford was asked after that fight, uh, after the weigh in, he said, I don't control Tank. Five of my fighters made weight, Tank didn't. The other five did. Malik called, he named five people. They all made weight. Tank, he, then he said, and uh, the, the other dude was like, So what do you do now that he made weight? I don't have no control over him rehydrating either. So Tank don't listen to his coaches about weight and rehydrating or none of that shit. So how he rehydrated for that Gamboa fight may have had something to do with him looking sluggish, you know? So you got to take that shit into account. You got to be a little smarter, Tank. And you see Devin, man. Devin just shining. Devin, when 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 you see Tank talk around Mayweather, Tank put his head down and he mumbled. But when you see Devin stand beside Floyd, you know what I mean? you It's almost like you looking at like Floyd like 20-some years ago. Like, <laughs> he don't shrink, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know how I do. Like, some, some people shrink when they get beside a giant, you know what I mean? And some people shine. And Devin shine beside Floyd. And Tank kind of, you know what I mean? Floyd overshadows Tank. And Tank let him do it. He don't talk. He mumbles. He put his head down. He just smiled when Floyd there. You know what I mean? You see Devin looking serious. Smile. Whatever the situation called for, that's what Devin is. They sitting on the plane. Devin looking like it's his plane. You know what I mean? <laughs> for sure for sure my brother man but yeah man i like both of these guys i like shakur stevenson i like devin haney to be honest with the situation um people talk about shakur stevenson and devin haney fighting um floyd mayweather said that tank davis and um uh, tank davis and um and devin haney won't fight because devin haney you know what i'm saying is going to be moving up to 135 he said that fight will never happen and, uh, you know, keep in mind, Shakur Stevenson is, you know, uh, two weight classes beneath Devin Haney. He was fighting at 126. The, yesterday was his first fight at 130. Um, it's just like, I don't know I'm if that fight will ever happen. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'll just say he might go back to featherweight, though, too. So Yeah, I don't he see might go back to 126 to get that Josh Warrington fight. You know what I mean? So by the time... You know, uh, he moves back to 130. Devin Haney probably going to be at 140 by then. You know what I mean? So it's going to be hard for them to fight unless it's at, like, some type of catch weight. So I feel like, man, we should stop. Well, not us on the panel, but people. People in general should stop trying to turn fighters against each other. They're, they're friends. Yeah. Like, of course, Stevenson and Devin Haney are friends. You know what I mean? They're not in the same weight class. Why are we? Why are people trying to turn them against each other? Sure, they, they had a little beef yeah. a couple years ago when they went back and forth and they squashed that beef and they support each other. So like even when Jay, like Prince, men, yeah, like men. And Sh I remember Jay Prince. He was asked about a potential fight about Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney, and Jay Prince was like, "That's the homie son." 
He was saying, you know, Bill Haney's my friend. That's the homie son. He was like, man, uh, he said if that fight happens, it happens. But he was like, they, they're they not really interested in making that fight. So I feel like Shakur going to be a great fighter, and so is Devin. But for sure, I got them one and two. Uh, D. Hodges, you got uh, something to say you want to get up in on this? Uh, yeah, I, I forgot. I forgot. Oh man, I dozed off for a second. I My forgot. Bad, but no, but no. Um, like yeah, I know because see, like I said, I really think Tank could do good at thirty five, man. Cause he don't have to lose weight. If he has to lose weight to one thirty, why not go to one thirty five? Where you don't gotta drain yourself. You don't gotta be everything else. So I will fill tank. Why would you keep, you have problems making 130. Why are you still going to try to go 130? Go to 135 where well, I could live comfortably. Do what I want and I still make weight. I don't got to drain myself because that's why he did bad against Gamboa. It sucks when you got to lose weight before the fight. That That's But you know, that was, he moved up in weight and missed weight. That's, that is not good. How your first fight at um, five pounds heavier, you still miss weight. Like <laughs> that's what I said. He, he, need, he, need to, he need to go to one thirty five, and now if he can't he make one, so he need to go no. to one forty. Then shoot, <laughs> he gonna get towed up at one forty, bro. That's a different type of animal. You keep moving up to these different weight classes. You going against bigger and bigger guys hey, like ever since like, Pacquiao, Pacquiao, went, ever, since Pacquiao okay. ever since Pacquiao, ever since Pacquiao, all them it man. don't matter. You could be a four division champion. Anything's possible. Anything is possible. You got five division, six division champions. But Pacquiao got Pacquiao got eight divisions. <laughs> you know how many weight classes that is. Well, well, hold up, one at a time. Yo, uh, yo, uh, D. How just finish what you were saying, and then the stone bone gonna go in right after you. Finish what you were saying. Yeah, like like Pacquiao, like dude, he he got like eight went up eight weight classes, and look at and I'm just I know it's heavyweight, but look at Deontay Wilder. If you think about the 40, 50 pound people he knock out, if you think weight classes, that would be a bunch of them. I know it's heavyweight, but if you broke them down weight wise, that's a bunch of classes. So. Who knows what class you could move up to until you get there? <laughs> the sky's the limit for anybody. Yo, go go ahead, uh, D, uh, Stonebone. I was just saying, we got Jose Ramirez. He's about five ten. You got Josh Taylor, the uh, big white boy for the UK, about five ten. I think the smallest of those guys is Regis Progress, and he probably five seven. Uh, what like Maurice Hooker is six feet? Man, I couldn't see a five foot four tank in there with a six foot tall, damn near Jose Ramirez. Or at, no, man, he don't even belong at. Listen, he don't even belong at one thirty five. The only person that I say he beat right now is probably Ryan Garcia because he got his chin out. He can't Loma probably without boxing. Uh, Tiafimo, I don't even to me. That that's the close fight, but I don't think he I don't think he able to do it in a live fight. Well, I'm telling you, y'all don't believe height means nothing. I done knocked out people bigger than me in street fights, and I don't even fight. But when I do, I could knock out a person bigger than me. It don't matter about your height. Height don't mean nothing. To, don't mean don't nothing. Mean nothing. Cause Mikey Garcia versus let Robert let, Easter. Let, let, Robert let Easter let was way taller. Let, let him finish real quick, uh, D. How just sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I was just no, I was saying size don't. If you don't know how to use your size, that's a problem. Speaking with Robert Easter, no power. He bows down to his level. He 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 he's he's five ten, five eleven, but he fight five five. You look at Robert Easter. He don't use his jab. He don't use his height. <laughs> he don't use range. Yeah, sorry, he's sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's right. right. <laughs> yeah, so. But when you're talking about big guys like a Jose Ramirez who finna be at 147, talking about fighting Crawfords and all of them guys at 140 right now, they'll be welterweights in a year or two. Tank better, man. Listen, Tank need to hire a. Uh, he got all this money. He can use one of Mayweather chefs. Get you a chef. Get you a perfecting athlete. Get you a, a meal prep person. 
that help you watch your weight and maintain 130. Like Tank, he need he he hasn't unified not one uh division, and I just don't see him holding up against a, a Devin Haney at 135. Like, not I don't see it. Dev, when that fight happened, Devin are coming in when like uh, Tank will probably be damn near the same weight of him, but when he that little, it just. Devin just gonna jab him all night. He don't even, he'll just jab him and beat him. Like, all you gotta do is jab him. Look. When you that much bigger, you jab him, keep him away from you. This ain't a look at we always say Mike Tyson. And what happened when Mike Tyson went against a tall heavyweight that wasn't scared of him? He got knocked out, Buster Douglas. Tyson was little. That's why Tyson had trouble. That's why Tyson had to use that, that uh that one, two, three side side. In and out footwork. Look at Sean Porter. Sean Porter is a small welterweight. That's why he has to do so much work to get inside. And it's hard to maintain that pace for a long time. And Tank throws 10, 20, 30 punches around at most. Like that ain't the type of style as a little guy. You need to be fast feet like a Porter, strong body moving forward like a Porter. Tank struggled with a, a 39 year old Gamboa that got knocked out. Eight years ago by Crawford. Then blew out of Achilles. Come on, man. <laughs> nah. Yeah. I got a comment for everybody real quick. Fresh BX says, you know, he's re regarding Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson. Fresh BX in the chat says, there can only be one king. You know what I mean? But Fresh BX, they're not, for me, to answer your question, you know what I mean? Um, They're not in the same division, bro. You know what I mean? So how are they going to fight if they're not in the same division, Fresh BX? Uh, and you want to get in on that uh, uh, Stonebone and D. Hodges? He says, you know what I mean? Uh, there can only be one king between Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney. There can only be one king in a division. But like you just said, Shakur is a 126 champion. And Floyd talking about Devin got one fight and then he's moving to 140. So from 126 to 140, that's a that's – Three way classes, right? Yeah, one, two. That's seven, a Canelo. Eight, that that would be a Canelo. That would be a Canelo because he moved up to seventy five from fifty four. So you have to do a Canelo. Uh, I no, know. no, no. He's moved <laughs> from fifty four to seventy five. Not over. Not in one fight. And Canelo started at welterweight, but he didn't do it in one fight. So nobody said that. If that was the case, nobody. How could uh, nobody made Golovkin fight war? You know what I mean? Ward, they made Ward move up and fight Kovalev instead of making Golovkin move up one one weight class and fight Ward. You know what I mean? So it can be Kings. They let they let fucking Golovkin reign. It ain't this ain't a uh this ain't no mono out here. It ain't no one you know what I mean, you got PBC, you got the zone, you got you got guys that are you got AJ that was a king, Wilder was a king, he got knocked off. Now Fury's a king, so I'm gonna just say I'm gonna say one more thing. Let me say one thing. I'm telling you, like, Calzaghi and Ward, even though they never fought nobody, they both are kings of light heavyweight. Even though they never fought, you can have two kings. Calzaghi 168, though. No, didn't he move up to 175? I think he was just at 168. Or did, he, probably, he did fight Roy Jones towards the end of his career. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I got I to gotta check. Yeah, check it for me, bro. But I, if it's the truth, then it's like, you know, you never know, man. Shit. You said, hold on, you said Ward didn't fight nobody? No, I said, no, I said they never fought Kawasaki and Ward. Oh, didn't fight each other, okay. They didn't fight each other. I, I guess they didn't fight nobody. They Hall no, of Fame. But, but I would have loved uh, to see that fight. Say, whoa, whoa. I'm about to say, this guy go hard tonight. No, I, I would have loved to see that fight, though. I would have had Ward because he's the black man, but you know what I'm saying? That, <laughs> that, 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 that would have been a good fight, though. Yo, yo uh, I just want to say Fresh BX says they will be in the same division. Come on, BX. Devin Haney, he's projected to, you know, possibly move up to middleweight one day. Shakur, bro, way smaller than that. Shakur ain't, they're not going to be in the same weight class. They, I don't, I don't see them ever being in the same weight class. And, you know, if they do fight, it'll probably be at a catch weight. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Their sparring session was a great sparring session. 
You know, we 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 all want to see that fight, but is it realistic? <clears throat> no, no Bob Arum ain't Bob Arum ain't feeding his food to Devin Haney. Of course, it ain't gonna happen. You already know Bob. <laughs> yeah, Bob Arum. Yeah. Right, Bob ain't let's trying be to be do that by right time, now. <laughs> yeah. By the time they would even be talked about fighting, how you know he'll still be with Bob? Like we don't know where Devin gonna. We don't know where Devin gonna be at. We don't know if Devin gonna still be with the zone or if he's gonna be doing his own thing. We just don't know. We're talking about years out. And Shakur's with Jay Prince. If they feel that once they've done what they need to do with top rank, they might do it on their own. But I felt like with the situation Shakur was in, top rank was a good move for him. Look at him. He he cashing out. He's a champion. He's he's the, the guy, like the only guy that motherfuckers talking about on all the platforms, because ain't nobody else fighting. <laughs> ain't nobody else did nothing. So I, but I don't. I kind of don't even want to. I kind of don't even want to see them fight each other. I want them both to have their legacies at different divisions. You know what I'm saying? I, I would. Much, I would much. I would much rather that. Why would you want them to fight? Like, no. I would want to see it. Shakur. I want Shakur to be undisputed. I want him to be undisputed. Like, yeah. I want we two gotta, good hey, people. I, think, I yeah, want two I'm good people. Well, we gotta watch that, man. H, we gotta start. We gotta stop dissing. Like I had an argument with on uh, the other platform. They were saying like, uh, uh Boo Boo and Charlo gotta knock each other, one of each other off, and then they'll get to fight Char uh, Canelo. I said, why? I said, look, if Canelo gonna fight one of them, he gonna fight them regardless of if they fight each other. They should sure. just want them to fight each other and lose. They just want they want the black guys to lose. They want them to beat each other off in hopes that he'll get a, a Canelo fight or a Loma. Listen. If 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 Devin and Shakur was to fight today, and uh, Devin beat him, he's not gonna go fight. Uh, Lomachenko ain't gonna fight Devin. Or if, if Boo Boo and Charlo fight, and Boo Boo beat Charlo, Canelo ain't about to fight Boo Boo. So they just want these black guys that are well known to beat each other, so they can have a target. We can't be, we can't fool them. Let them fool us into attacking our black fighters and saying, "Oh, y'all gotta fight each other and not fight this." white dude that's ducking you. You know what I mean? We got to watch that, man, because I've seen a lot of that going on, man. A lot of it. Yo, I got a question for you. Uh, Protecting them um, guys. Um, Stonebone, I got a quick question for you. Yo, what's your thoughts on Bob Arum? Like, um, Bob Arum, you know, I feel like he's been doing a good job with Crawford, but I feel like he could have did a better job with Terrence Crawford for real. Like, he, I feel like he missed out a lot, a lot of opportunities for Terrence Crawford, especially a fight with uh, Manny Pacquiao. He, Terrence Crawford was never given that Manny Pacquiao fight. Also, a Mikey Garcia fight. You know what I mean? Mikey was on top rank. I feel like Mikey versus Terrence Crawford could have been a great fight for Terrence. You know what I mean? And even a Lomachenko fight when Terrence was at 135, I feel like they could have made that fight happen as well. So I feel like nah, Terrence... Nah, when, nah, Lomachenko was at a featherweight still when Bud was at 135. Lomachenko went... Went pro at uh, featherweight, remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. Also, he did. And when, yeah, you're right. You know, okay. Bud, and also, just like how we talking about Shakur or Tank and uh, Devin, when Bud was fighting at 135, Mikey was at featherweight as well. But Mikey was moving to 130, so Bud was still pushing for that fight. And uh, they when they when it became clear that Mikey was going to 135, he had already. Um, he didn't go to 135 until he came back. Remember, he sat out for two years. He he missed uh, with uh, beef with top rank. He he was out of the ring for 30 months. So, and when he came back, he came back at 135. So when he was with top rank, I mean, he was never there. Bud wanted that fight, but he was. They Mikey didn't want to do that. Robert Garcia yeah. said it because he said it out his own mouth. I watched the video where Mikey said, I'm not fighting, bud. I heard it come out this right. man's mouth. He said it. Go watch YouTube. If you, you can watch it on YouTube. Mikey said it. I don't want to fight with bud. <laughs> okay. He didn't want no smoke. He said it out his own mouth. <laughs> yo, yo, uh, yo, so, so Stone Bone, what about the Pacquiao fight? At least, like, man, I feel like he should have got one. That's the one I, I don't. That's the one that. That's the only. Listen, I don't. I look at all these promoters the same. They all snakes, crooks. Just like how we had. We was talking about this. Me and a few of the guys on the little back call we be having. The same problem that Bud had to get the Pacquiao fight 
is the same problem that Earl had trying to get the Keith Thurman fight. You had guys who were loved and respected in their uh, in the PBC of Keith Thurman and then top rank of Pacquiao. So these guys were long legends, you know what I mean? And they did everything in their power to not fight them. Keith did everything. He said he messed up. He just came out recently and said he made mistakes in the handling of the Earl Spence situation. And Pacquiao, we know what happened. Bob Arum them protected him. They didn't want, you know what I mean? And once, once, once they fit, realized that he was leaving and they was trying to make that fight, Pacquiao didn't want to do it. You know what I mean? He knew what was happening. He knew they was trying to feed him to use him to build Terrence Crawford's name. So when Pat, when when Top Rank should have did it, they was protecting Manny Pacquiao. And when they wanted it to do it, Pacquiao had already established his position of power, and he pushed off. But I blame Bob Aaron for that because Pat, they should have gave him the 25 minutes. Whatever that money was, they should have gave it. You know what I mean? They should have they should have did it. Like like PBC, they should have gave uh, Keith Thurman that $12 million that he wanted back then when he was talking about fighting Earl. You should have did it. And now look what happened. Keith don't got neither one of those belts. The, the biggest fight for at PBC for Earl was that fight, and he didn't get it. The biggest fight top rank had for Bud was a Pacquiao, and he didn't get it. So it's just these promoters, man, they, they be trying to protect their assets. And Keith Thurman was an asset, and Pacquiao was an asset. You know what I mean? And I, and, but I blame Bob Aaron for that, no doubt. He And I and I know Terrence Crawford and Bo, and Bo Mack look at it too. They they know who, who to blame for that. For sure, for sure, man. Just for me, it's like Crawford, he's been doing everything he's supposed to do. He's been beating everybody they put in front of him. You know what I mean? But we want to see Crawford, you know what I mean, in there with like a Pacquiao, one of those, you know, one of those crossover stars in the sport of boxing, one of those big, big names, you know, like Pacquiao, how, you know, uh, uh, Spence got that, that Mikey fight. You know what I mean? Spence had got that Mikey fight and they had like, Damn near 46,000 people, I believe, at Cowboy Stadium. I feel like, man, that, that's what, that should have been Crawford's fight. You know what I mean? And I feel like Bob Aaron dropped the ball when it came to Crawford yeah. bro, a, a couple of times. You know what I mean? But he dropped the ball. He dropped him. No, he didn't even drop the ball. Drop the ball implies that that it, 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 it slipped out of your hand. You know what I mean? He he hit the ball. He took the ball and went home. Pacquiao was his cash cow. You know what I mean? Bud wasn't bringing in generating that type of money of a Pacquiao, so he was protecting Pacquiao. So he didn't drop the ball. He fucking took his ball home. And that's his fault, man. And look, that's his fault. And the, but that's people forget that. The, I don't, at the I'm end of the day, Bud sold his soul, but... The about the shit. Fight. He doubled the back. He finna have the, he's finna get a real Mexican fighter. Mikey, That was, that's not even a real fight for him. He's getting a real... Mexican fight, and they're gonna probably end up doing it like Earl finna get uh, he finna see billboards of Jose uh, Jose Ramirez versus Terrence Crawford in his in his stadium. He's about to see them put them billboards all over Texas. He's gonna be mad. He's gonna tell Al Heyman, How the fuck is you letting this dude come down here and fight a Mexican and sell out my my venue? I'm that I'm Dallas Stadium, and I think that right there is gonna force Earl Hand into. Telling Al, no, nah, we gotta, you know, this dude ain't finna come beat up a Mexican and knock him out. And I just, I didn't knock out Mikey. You know what I mean? Like, that's gonna be, Mikey wasn't a 140 pound unified champion. Jose Ramirez is. And that fight is already trending in the, uh, in black and Hispanic communities. <laughs> so we finna get, some, we're gonna get him a big one. It's gonna be probably knocking out Jose Ramirez and we're gonna get that Earl fight. For sure. Hey, what you think it'll be a bigger fight for Crawford though? Yeah, Josh Taylor or um Josh Taylor or possibly uh Jose Ramirez. Which one you like better for Crawford? Who you who you want to see him in there with? I wanna I, I, if if Bud was not like who he was, like if the bigger fight would be um uh, going overseas. But I mean with all of the UK rules and the different nasal sprays and different drugs that you're allowed to take until the week of or the fight that you can't take in America. I don't, he can't beat them, but I'm just saying, like, you don't even you don't even want to go over there and play with them people. So the bigger fight is going to be Jose Ramirez right there, and uh, Jerry Jones want that fight. He already he already uh, talked to Bob Barham, said when 
when Jose Ramirez come back to Dallas, they doing it at that stadium. Yeah, that's a big fight right there, especially if Jose Ramirez can beat uh Josh Taylor. I think that'll be love. Like, you know what I mean? Fight. Who I got in? Uh, Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez? Ramirez. Yeah. Man, that's a good fight. You got Jose Ramirez, D. Hodges. Um, Man, that's a good fight. Josh Taylor, to me, can squabble, though. I can't lie. Josh, Doc, Josh Taylor can scrap, bro. You know what, what I mean? What did you think of the re him and Regis? What did I you thought think he beat up Regis you, real good, bro. Regis? I thought he beat. I thought he beat the brakes off of Regis, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Did you pick Regis or you had? Uh, I picked. <laughs> I picked Regis. I didn't know Josh Taylor was that good, bro. Like, man, Josh Taylor can really fight, bro. He can. He can box and he can bang on the inside. Like, he can go. Uh, you know, he could go right on the inside in this. Uh, you know, go to war too. So, man, rugged. he rugged. But, yeah. but Ramirez got way more power. If he get punched by Ramirez, like he was getting punched by Progress. He's going to sleep. The dude get hit too much, man. I don't like fighters that get punched too much. Who get hit too much? Jose Ramirez? No, he he. I um, know. I'm saying um, progress was piecing him up. Ooh, I, don't if, I don't know about that. He landed some shots, but Josh Taylor was beating. But if he gets hit by Ramirez like that, Ramirez just I don't know. I just seem like he has more power, so he better be real careful. I ain't gonna lie. He, Look, look, but either one of those fights, Crawford could get one of them dudes in the ring. I think Josh Taylor might be a bigger star than Jose Ramirez because, you know, first, you know, not to race into it, but Josh Taylor's a white dude. You know what I mean? He's white. And also, you know what I mean? Um, Josh Taylor from the UK, the UK, be, they be backing up their fans. Like, you know how, like, Fury and Wilder. I think Josh Taylor versus uh, Terrence Crawford could possibly be like a Tyson Fury versus – Wilder, bro, like you know, of, of what a about Floyd and Ricky Hatton? Ricky yeah, Hatton. yeah, yeah. Now, now you talking for real? Y'all got y'all a dream. It's not, it's not gonna happen, America, bro. If they did Fury and Wilder in America. Why not do Josh Taylor versus Terrence Crawford in America? Because that means Ramirez and them have to move up from one forty. There's no way yeah. Bud's going. Bud ain't going back to one forty. No. I know I'm not saying to move to 140. I'm saying they will move up to 140 after they fight. The winner of that fight, Jose Ramirez, Josh Taylor, they're gonna move up to 147. So I'm saying I think Josh Taylor beat uh Jose Ramirez. I mean, I, I just gotta be honest. I think Josh Taylor got more oh, skills, bro. I don't know if I just don't. I seen uh when Regis, like when Regis, when Regis didn't let him like push him around. Regis had good work. Regis that cut. Regis, Regis was putting that, putting hands on that head. So and Ramirez is throwing. He one of those eighty punches, ninety punches around type guy. He gonna come in there and try to Madonna you. That's his. That's what he. They on Robert Garcia time. They on that. They on that. I don't know if they drink speed or what. Them dudes be hundred punches around. You know what I mean, only one that don't throw a hundred punches is Mikey. Everybody else like fucking. Even uh, Josecito Lopez is running around throwing 80 punches around now. So, I don't know, man. Thanks, thanks. I, I favor Ramirez in that fight. I think Ramirez, they both about, they about the same size. I think Josh Taylor, he's flatter footed, though. He, I mean, but the, that flatter footedness gives him, I think, uh, he's a better counter puncher than Ramirez because he flat footed, so he kind of leans. When you punch, he leaned back. You can see how he did it to Regis. But he was way bigger than Regis. Regis threw the punch. He leaned back, hit Regis' ass with some shit and wobbled him. I was like, I didn't think he was going to beat. He, people was talking about, oh, that was a close fight. I was like, bro, I'm black. Only reason I, you can say that was a close fight is I'm trying, to, I'm trying to not say the black dude got his ass whooped. But he lost that fight clearly. Yeah, he had some moments. He had some moments in that fight, though. I seen Maurice Hooker did land some big right hands on uh, – Jose Ramirez, he actually rocked him a couple of times. He buckled him a little bit, but you know, I think he, he was just too much of a dog for Maurice Hooker. But to be honest, though, Stonebone, you know what I mean? This is my opinion. I feel like, uh, man, Josh Taylor, I don't think he's flat footed, bro. I seen him like outbox people. Like, man, I seen Josh Taylor. I think the dude name was, uh, what's the name? Barrett Check was one of them rugged dudes, bro. Josh, I don't, I don't mistake when I say he's flat footed as a, he's not a good boxer. He's a, to me, Technically, he's a better boxer than Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez is just more active and throws more punches. When I say he's flat-footed, I mean that he's not a toe fighter. You know what I mean? He ain't going to be on his toes. 
he's more of a uh heel heel to uh no, the bottom of your your toe the uh what is that like your the bottom not your knuckles the bottom of your feet he's he's not on his toe tips he's on his toes are flat but he's his heels are off the feet so his feet are planted on his I don't even know what the fuck you call the things like right where you build the calluses out on your feet right under your shit where you get uh fucking coins and swords he get like under there that's where his plant his base is at that's that gives him his power too but you can see when he boxed he wasn't punching as hard because when he moved he didn't he didn't punch with the same power when he was moving cuz when he was moving and he punched Regis Regis kept coming you know what I mean and, but when he stopped and hit Regis he made Regis like that's how I know he got decent power because Regis Regis ran through what's the name uh, what's the name was throwing punches and Regis just was eating that shit and came through and knocked him out but he was hitting Regis and stopping him in his tracks so that him he, and, that's gonna be a great fight though man that's a great too- that's a that's a 50 51 49 to me I'm favoring Ramirez. For sure, for sure. Definitely respect your opinion. D Hodges, so you said you got you got Jose Ramirez, D Hodges? Yep. Why by, is that? Break it down stop, for me. By stoppage. I'm telling you, because he, he's gonna he's gonna be trying to do something. And I really think if Marrera, uh whatever, if Ramirez catch him, he's going to sleep. That's just my opinion, you know. I got Ramirez because it just seemed like He's more of a dog, kind of. A, that, which I'm not saying nothing from um, Josh. I'm not saying nothing bad, but it just seemed like he, he get punched kind of too much to be getting hit by Ramirez. Just my opinion. I feel I feel like, man, uh, Josh Taylor got a, a better resume than uh, Jose Ramirez. Like, he beat Regis. He beat Victor Postal. Victor Postal. Oh, shout out to JFL, man. JFL, my boy, pull up, man. Join the panel. JFL D... DSFG 38 and 0 pull up. You know, um, this is what I gotta say. I feel like of uh, uh, Josh Taylor, he beat, you know, an undefeated, uh, what's the name? Ivan uh Berichek. He beat Berichek. He, yeah, Berichek was a dog too. He beat Berichek. He also he beat uh Victor Postal, Victor Postal, who, who, who only had one loss to Terrence Crawford, you know what I mean? And also he beat uh Regis Prograde, bro. I, and man, I, I like Josh Taylor's skills. I'm gonna be honest, Josh Taylor, bro, is nice. I just feel he like he won that series, though. He won it. He won the, the boxing super series. So yeah, yeah, he's a killer, bro. And Jose Ramirez for me, the only notable fighter I know that he beat personally was um was a Maurice Hooker. And I seen Jose Ramirez in a close fight before against somebody. He was, I think, he had a split decision fight with some dude. You know what I mean? So Jose Ramirez, you know. He's good. I like him. Shout out to uh, Robert Garcia, of course. You know what I mean? And Ellie Setback and all those dudes who's, uh, you know, a part of, uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, Team R R G B A. You know what I mean? Uh, Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. They're doing a good job over there developing fighters. I just feel like, uh, man, Josh Taylor too much. Man, Josh Taylor got more skills. Even though I think Jose Ramirez was an Olympian too. Like people say he's an Olympian. He got more. He, he got skills. He really is just not a brawler like that. But that's a good fight right there, man. You know what I mean? In the future for sure. And I just want to see Crawford get in there with the um with the winner. You know, what I mean, I think Josh Taylor gonna win that joint, you know what I mean, to be honest. But yeah, man, uh where you more- at is it about where you at a 55-45 or a 60-40? Like where you at with uh 55, State? probably like a 55, 45, something like that. 45, yeah. Yeah, 55, that's still, 45, close, 45, though, that's still a close fight, you know what I mean? So Hell yeah, man. I went against Josh Taylor once with Regis. Man, I learned my lesson, bro. Josh Taylor beat the brakes off of Regis. To me, he beat up. He was bullying Regis, bro. He was hitting. Man, Regis looked kind of scared in that fight. He had Regis' nose dripping blood out of his nose. Uh, my so, bad. Go ahead. Nah, I say, yeah, that was bad. I that was his blood. He did he break his nose or because this shit was just leaking. Man. I thought it was broken. <laughs> this shit was leaking, bro. Yeah, <laughs> hey, his nose was leaking. Shout out to Fresh BX. I remember Fresh BX had picked uh he picked Josh Taylor in that fight, man. You know what I mean? But oh, what you think about the since we talking about the winners fighting and you picking uh Taylor, man, man, bro picking uh, uh Ramirez. You saying they had uh they, y- y'all didn't announce. I say I can say y'all since I'm saying the zone. 
y'all had announced the losers fighting, you know, uh, Mo Hooker and, and Regis. So what you what you think of that fight? I guess it's back on Mo Mo back out there in Omaha with uh with uh <coughs> both back and them working. So I'm guessing that shit probably finna be announced like the date soon. Or or I don't know if they they might gonna push that back and do a tune up for them before they do it. But what do you think of that fight? Do you think Regis can Regis, like I said, he's probably five seven and Maurice Hooker is is every bit of six feet. So it's gonna be the same problems he had with Josh Taylor that height, he gonna have with with uh, Maurice Hooker, so what you think of that fight? That's a good, that's a good fight. I think uh, I got Regis in that one. I think Regis comes back and win. I feel like man, Maurice Hooker is a good fighter. He's solid. He got a big right hand, but uh, I got to question his uh, cardio a little bit. I see him get tired, and then um, I want to question his chin. You know what I mean? I don't know if he could take <laughs> the big punches because I seen him go down against another fighter, and I seen what uh, Jose Ramirez did with him. I just think Regis is a, a better a better all-around fighter. Who you got in there? Man, I'm, I, you know, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of biased towards uh, Team Crawford, but I wanted Regis to get that Crawford. Man, I wanted Regis to, man, Regis was in line to get that Bud fight. I wanted Regis to get that, man. Um uh, he let that slip away, man. I don't know if the going overseas hurt him. I don't know if all of the shit Josh Taylor and him in the UK, you can take the nasal spray that Billy Joe Saunders was taking up until the week, the uh, whatever the stuff is in that nasal spray, you can take that up until a week of the fight. It's a, uh, it's two other drugs you can take all the way until um, three till the till the weigh in. You got to stop taking it, and if they test you and the level is above a certain thing, you can. It's illegal, but if it's under a certain thing, you cool. Just like the nasal spray, it got to be under a certain level in your system. And that's why Billy Joe had failed when he was supposed to fight, when it's supposed to fight Boo Boo, right? And he failed that test for the nasal spray because in America it's illegal. And over in the UK, you can take it. And he was just saying, like, hey, it's legal over there. So, but uh, Vada was like, we don't give a fuck. That shit ain't legal in the United States. So I'm, I'm probably, I won't read just, to do good, man, he can fight his way back in a competition and maybe get some big fights when he move up to 140. But I don't know if he can deal with the size. I watched the trouble he had with Josh Taylor. I, Maurice Hooker done changed teams. He he trained. He changed camps. He going to Colorado. He doing uh, he doing everything he do he can do to try to win these fights. This is gonna be a tough fight, man. I'm I probably. I think Regis is too little, man. I'm going to lean towards Maurice Hooker, man. I just think he might be too small. What about you, D? How, just who you got? Yeah. Uh, and it's crazy. I don't know, but I like progress. I don't know. For some reason, I just really think, like, as he could, he really got, like, he could take punches and he has mad energy. I really think he could just outgas Hooker. That's just my opinion. I got progress. For sure, that's a good fight, man. For both of them, man, I think it's a. And they need a bounce back, like after the, they both lost in that uh, one uh, Jose Ramirez knocked out Maurice Hooker and uh, Regis got beat. You know what I'm saying? Twelve round, twelve round decision by uh, Josh Taylor, and also, man, Maurice Hooker been knocked out, and uh, uh, Regis wasn't knocked out. I just feel like you know, I, I'm not sure if Jose uh. I'm not sure if Maurice Hooker, you know, ha has recovered from that knockout, to be honest. And Maurice Hooker took more damage than uh, Regis Prograde as well. So that's something yeah, I more, want to and, and more times, too. He's been in more more wars, you know. He done, he done been damaged a lot more than uh, Regis. Exactly, man. Like, I want Regis need to get, Regis needs to go back to Texas, man. Like, every, every since he uh, fought um, – Damn, I can't. Uh, what's what's the cat name? Uh, in the that the the first fight in the boxing super series, he moved to California, man. He been like when you watch his interviews and shit, his fight hype interviews. He sitting in the mansion in California with the talking to the girl, the uh, fight hype girl. Like, I don't know how hungry Regis is no more. He acting in uh, that movie. He just did a movie with Mark Wahlberg and them. So I don't know how hungry he is, man. That's gonna he better be hungry because if not, he gonna have some. He gonna have his hands full. That's for real. Because he done moved. He live in Hollywood now. So I hope that ain't going to his head. Some people were saying he wasn't training hard for 
Josh Taylor. You know what I mean? He was out in out there training on the beach and shit. You know what I mean? Sitting around talking and uh signing autographs and taking pictures. So he gonna have to clean that up if he if he makes sure he's still hungry on that level. Yo, uh man, uh hell yeah, bro. I'm happy boxing is back. Matter of fact, we got some boxing fights coming on tomorrow, bro. You know what I mean? I don't know if y'all gonna watch it. Well, there's gonna be some boxing say, tomorrow. Perez, you say you got Ramirez being Taylor in a close fight. Ramirez has the best power at 140. He definitely has his country behind him. Well, well I guess they both got country. Taylor got you, you over there and the UK behind him. And uh, Ramirez yeah. got Mexican Americans and Mexicans behind him. So. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm. We probably in for some treats. Jeez, yeah, man. yeah, man. I can't wait, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm just excited, bro. Shakur Stevenson looked so sharp last night for me, bro. Like, I think the kid made a, a big time statement. You know what I mean? So, shout outs to Shakur, bro. I mean, bringing boxing back with a bang. He brought back boxing back with a bang. I just want to show um Stone. Oh, I can't hear you. Actually, you on mute? No. You can. Can you hear me? Yo, yo. Yeah, you're fine. I can hear you. you hold on. No, I couldn't hear. I thought I couldn't hear H. I thought it looked. You hear me? It was blowing. I thought he was talking. What do you I didn't hear? Him. Well, hold on. He don't hear me. Yo, you hear me now? So, what fight you looking for, D? What, what, what's on? Which, what you trying to come to fruition? Yo, Stone Bone, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, bet, yeah. bet. Okay, I don't know what that was. But yeah, uh, I want to show you this real quick. Uh, my brother, uh, Stone Bone Boxing, you know, Pernell Whitaker. I'm going to put him up on the screen. I want to um, show you the tail of the tape, Pernell Whitaker, compare him to um, to young, uh, young uh, Shakur Stevenson. You know what I mean? Uh, on a box wreck, as we all can see. Pernell Whitaker, a former Olympic gold medalist. Pernell Whitaker, 40 wins, 17 knockouts. He wasn't the biggest puncher in the world, but of course, you know, Pernell Whitaker has some of the best skills that we ever seen in the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? Uh, Pernell Whitaker was 5'6", with a 69-inch reach. 5'6", with a 69-inch reach. Um, Southpaw. Go ahead, my bad. Go ahead. No, I was just saying that's. I thought he was bigger than five six. That's that's crazy, bro. That, oh, he was beating up on De La Hoya in there. <laughs> he was, and he beat up Chavez. He won that fight. Matter of fact, I think he went up all the way to one. Did he go to one fifty four? Became a champion. I think he ended up going to one fifty four and became a champion. But as you can see, Pernell Whitaker was a southpaw. Pernell Whitaker was. Five six with a sixty nine inch reach, and uh, just looking at his resume on a right here, I, I will say some of his most notable victories. I'm gonna start off with uh Roger Mayweather. He beat Roger Mayweather, Pernell Whitaker. He he beat Roger Mayweather. Where was this at? Okay, right here. He beat Roger Mayweather. He uh he beat Jose Luis Ramirez. Jose Luis Ramirez, who had one hundred and two wins at the time. Was a great nah. Mexican fighter. I'm sorry. Go ahead, my brother. Nah, I just said, damn, hundred and two. <laughs> yeah, nah. bro, and that was like early in his career. That was he had 102 victories early in his career. So, Pernell Whitaker, he beat he beat Roger Mayweather, he beat Jose Luis Ramirez, and he beat Azuma Nelson. I know you remember Azuma Nelson, Stonebone. Uh, you remember Azuma yeah, Nelson? He was, that was, Nelson was beast. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Azuma Nelson was knocking everybody out, bro. Azuma Nelson was a killer. You know what I mean? So Pernell beat Azuma Nelson. This is at, um, I believe that was at lightweight. Beat Azuma Nelson. Then Pernell moves up in weight. He moves up, beats James Buddy McGirt. You know, the great but trainer. James I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Damn, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't even remember the Buddy McGirt fight. What? Yeah, yeah, Buddy McGirt yeah, Buddy McGirt was a hell of a fighter at his time. You know, he's a great trainer as well. Buddy McGirt, man, was a great fighter. He was a champion. You know what I mean? He was a champion. James Buddy McGirt had 59 wins and only two losses at the time. Then after that James Buddy McGirt victory, 
he fought Julio Cesar Chavez, and I felt like he beat Julio Cesar Chavez, and Pernell Whitaker was robbed from that victory. You know what I mean? So he, he fought Chavez. It was a draw. They gave him a draw, but everybody knows Pernell Whitaker won that fight. Then he fights James Buddy McGirt again, and he beats him. He beats James Buddy McGirt a second time. You know what I mean? Then he fights Julio Cesar Vasquez. Julio Cesar Vasquez, who is from Argentina, and people don't know, but Julio Cesar Vasquez is the first man to beat Winky Wright. And Winky Wright, first ballot Hall of Famer. Julio Cesar Vasquez beat up Winky Wright, bro. The first man to beat Winky up, and he knocked Winky, Winky Wright down like three times in that fight. If, you, if y'all don't know who Julio Cesar Vasquez was, make sure you go check him out. And that was at 154. So Pinnell Whitaker was able to go all the way to 154 from 135 pounds, from the lightweight division at 135 all the way up to 154 pounds and become a champion. You know what I mean? And Pernell, he fought Oscar De La Hoya, and I felt like he beat Oscar De La Hoya. You know what I mean? And he, he was robbed in that one. Another yeah, robbery. Right. Plenty yeah, of that's robbery. Crazy. So, he fought, so he fought Buddy McGirt in a rematch, beat him for the one, uh, WBC 147, and then went and fought for the WBA 154 <laughs> against. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're and right. You're right. Dick. You right, bro. Pernell Whitaker was one of the all-time greats. Um, you know, uh, for uh, Stonebone Boxing, I want to, you know, just hear your thoughts on how good of a fighter was Pernell Whitaker. And I mean, what do you remember about Pernell as a fighter? Man, the first time, the first time I ever saw Pernell Whitaker was I was just watching him just moving, just like he was. He was the definition of hit and don't get hit. You know what I mean? Like, he was he was one of those people. He was the real make you quit type fighter. Not out of – he just make you frustrated. And he knew he could beat you. He could frustrate you, make you miss. His counter punching was great. <sighs> Listen, when you that good, you know you're great when they – normally they would have just gave that fight to uh, uh, Chavez, you know. <laughs> they would have just gave it to him. But they know that they couldn't. They had to call it a draw. So, man, man, rest in peace, Pernell Whitaker, man. That's crazy. For sure. Man, for I didn't sure. know. I didn't know. He, I knew Whitaker before. I didn't know he won the title at 54, too. That's so he won 35, 40, 47, and 54. So he a four division champion, right? Okay. Yep. He beat a Julio Cesar Vasquez at 154 for the belt. D. Hodges, what about you? What do you remember as a – what do you remember from Pernell Whitaker as a fighter, D. Hodges, and how good was he? Um, He was a good – shit, he didn't – sorry. He didn't get hit, and he moved, and he make you miss. Because I would say my top four, like, that move like that, because first will be Emmanuel Augustus. Because for some reason, that's where Parnell got that style from, because Augustus – that dude really like you couldn't hit him for nothing, and then Parnell, and then Prince Nassim. Because before Marquez or whoever Barrera would ever knock him out, Prince Nassim was doing that too. Like, you know, the the movement and you can't hit him, and that gotta get frustrating when you're punching at somebody and you can't hit them, but they keep punching you. So, those would be my three. First would be Augustus, then second would be Parnell, and third would be. Prince of scene, just in that old, like, making you look stupid punching. But Parnell's definitely, but you got to give it to Augustus because I watched his videos, dude. That dude, he was amazing. He could lean back, lean forward. Lean, they called him the drunken boxer. So, yeah, that it's hard to do that style. And that's why I said I give Lomachenko his props because that's what he do. He does the same thing they did, move around and duck and bob and weave, and you can't punch him. And Pinnell was the truth, bro. I can't even lie. He was one of the best fighters that I have ever seen, bro. Just like, you know what I'm saying, the way he used to avoid punches, how great his defense was, you know what I mean? I mean, Pernell Whitaker and Floyd Mayweather are both considered the best defensive fighters of all time. You know what I mean? When you talk about the greatest defense, everybody talks about Pernell Whitaker, and uh, Floyd Mayweather, bro, like 
one and two as far as defensive fighters. You know, um, right here, I got Shakur Stevenson on the screen. And um, Shakur Stevenson, a hell of a fighter. Shakur Stevenson, 14 wins, eight knockouts. And, uh, man, the guy got all the skills in the world. All the skills. He's very smart and Olympic silver medalist. Like I said earlier, Pernell Whitaker was an Olympic gold medalist. Shakur Stevenson, an Olympic silver medalist. You know what I mean? And uh, just a great, great young fighter. You know what I mean? Um, great IQ. Both of them are southpaw. Shakur Stevenson is a southpaw. And uh, just show you his height right here. Shakur Stevenson is 5'8". And um, he got a 68-inch reach. So Pernell Whitaker, he got a 69-inch reach. Shakur Stevenson got a 68-inch reach. Pernell Whitaker was 5'6". And Shakur Stevenson is 5'8". Very close when it comes to tell of the tape. You know what I mean? Um, I think Shakur Stevenson, bro, out of all the fighters that I've seen in the past, and well, in the future, I think he's the closest thing that I've seen to Pernell Whitaker. Rest in peace to Pernell Whitaker. I feel like Shakur Stevenson, he can carry that torch. You know what I mean? That Pernell Whitaker, you know, that the same torch that per Pernell Whitaker had. And I feel like Shakur, bro, going to be a future pound-for-pound -pound king just like Pernell Whitaker, bro. If it's any fighter in boxing right now, you know what I mean, that can be the next Pernell Whitaker, I think it's going to be Shakur Stevenson. You know what I mean? Because Shakur is a great boxer. He got a great IQ. And Shakur, he's not the biggest puncher. You know what I mean? Just like Pernell Whitaker wasn't the biggest puncher. But Pernell Whitaker, he can get you up out of there. You know what I mean? He showed that he can knock people out. And I'm going to show some highlights in a little bit right now. Matter of fact, I'm going to show some highlights of Pernell Whitaker. And I'm just going to show y'all, bro, what I'm talking about. But, yeah, man, um, Shakur, I think the, the sky is the limit for this kid. I think Shakur going to be like uh, – like Pernell Whitaker, possibly a four division world champion, you know what I mean? In the sport of boxing, I think Shakur Stevenson could possibly be a pound for pound king in the sport of boxing, bro. You know what I mean? I think it's going to be between him and Devin Haney. I think Devin Haney is the next Floyd Mayweather. I think Shakur Stevenson is going to be the next Pernell Whitaker, and you can't go wrong. There's a lot of people in, in right now that felt like Pernell Whitaker was a better fighter than Floyd Mayweather, you know what I mean? It's, it's to each his own, whoever you like better. But I know one thing, they're both, both of them are great fighters, Pernell Whitaker and Floyd Mayweather. Just like Shakur Stevenson is a great fighter, and so so is Devin Haney, bro. They're going to be running the sport of boxing for a very, very long time, bro. You know what I mean? Shakur and Devin Haney going to be running the sport of boxing for a very long time, bro. And uh, I don't know if they'll ever fight each other, but I feel like, bro, they're going to be running the sport. And as you guys can see on the screen right here, there's some Pernell Whitaker highlights. Pernell Whitaker versus Julio Cesar Chavez right here when he was robbed. And you can see his expression on his face when he got robbed in that fight, bro. He was he was very angry. You know what I mean? He knew he won. There's plenty of fights, bro. And, hey, my boy Stonebone Boxing and, um, and D. Hodges, I feel like the sport of boxing, they did Pernell Whitaker wrong, bro. You know what I mean? Plenty of times he got robbed in fights. And plenty of times, Pernell Whitaker, you know what I mean? Um, You know, he was mistreated in the sport of boxing. And his first loss he took was to H Jose Luis Ramirez. And Pernell Whitaker really won that fight, bro. So they did a – that they robbed him in his first loss, bro. One of the look, at the dude, look at the way he moves, dude. I told you. That's why right now Lomachenko, like just saying from experience, like – he looked like Lomo looked like him more than anybody. The way Lomo moves and like the way he does, I, I think Lomo looked more like Parnell than anybody. For sure. I respect my, your opinion. My, I respect your opinion. I just feel like Lomo, um, you know what I mean? He's I think Lomo's might be a little bit overrated, my brother, just to be honest. Um, Lomo's been in the sport boxing for a very long time. He's out here avoiding fighters such as Devin Haney. Pernell Whitaker never ducked anybody. You know what I mean? Never ducked well, anybody, bro. You know what I mean? From uh, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, Felix Trinidad, you know what I mean? Buddy McGirtz. You talking about Julio Cesar Chavez. Um, you talking about Julio Cesar Vasquez. He, he, from, from, one, from 135 to 154, Pernell Whitaker never ducked anybody. And I'm telling you, uh, Lomachenko's out here ducking Devin Haney right now, bro. So I can't, I can't give him. I, I feel you. That's your opinion. My opinion. I, I can't give him 
Lomachenko, Pernell Whitaker. And I seen Lomachenko get a, get beat by Salito. I would never Pernell, Pernell Whitaker would never get beat by somebody like Salito, bro. You know what I mean? Pernell would have boxed circles around Salito. And I feel like Lomachenko is closer. You know what I mean? But I respect your opinion. I respect your opinion, my brother. I can't say you wrong. Because if you look you at mean? this, this is what Lomo do when he made people quit. He was turning them. You got to give Lomo, like, it, I know he ain't fought nobody, but the people he did fight, he made them look real bad. He didn't make, real, he didn't make Lomo, uh, he didn't make Salito look Salito's bad. Salito's the only one, but everybody else he did. Oh, Linares, Linares dropped him, Luke Campbell. Man, look, go back and look at the post fight for Luke Campbell and look at how Lomachenko looked. You know what I mean? That boy was blue and blue and red. Like that's how people I'm not look. saying it. I'm just talking about style wise. I'm not comparing them. I'm just saying style wise, that's the way Lomo fight. He does all that. Look at that's look like Lomo. He does all that ducking and th he does he that. Still get hit, though. He still get hit though. Pernell is Pernell doing that dude's throwing twenty punches and he ain't hit Pernell one time. <laughs> True that. Punches, True, that. Slid, True that. True that. But I'm just saying, style wise, like if you actually really watch Lomo's fights, he's good at doing that stuff too. He gets connected sometimes, but I say he, he looks a lot like that defensively. He's more offensive to me than Pernell. Sometimes Pernell would, he would not. I mean, like there's some times where, like he he needed to counter and he didn't. You know, like there's times where you was like, come on, throw. You got him right there. He like. You don't embarrass him so much. Hit him, right? You know what I mean? Like, there are times where he could, I think he, he could have took more advantage of it and made those refs even worse with the draws and he's cheating them. You know what yep. I mean? Like, sometimes some of the punches he didn't throw made it look closer than it actually was. So it's like, fuck. So, but Shakur, I think it's more offensively. That's why I think – that's why when I was talking about the Tito is when I watch, when I watch like, the punch variety – and I watch the hooks to the body, and I'm watching all of this, these different things he's doing up, down, like keeping them off balance. Like that's look at that's crazy, like moving like that though. That is very. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna lie. People be doing, he be dropping his hands down like that and avoiding punches and countering folks like. Bro, I, I swear Shakur be doing that same thing as Pernell, bro. Well, see, in my opinion, I wanted to get on that one. I think Shakur is more closer to a Floyd than a Parnell because see Floyd. He didn't do all that moving, but he's good at blocking. He's good at rolling. Like, you know, I mean, um, Shakur Stevenson wasn't doing all that dipping and dodging. He just was blocking and rolling. So he he kind of did the Floyd Mayweather to me. <laughs> and you see, and you see now he just jumped and avoided that jumped punch. From <laughs> Buddy McGurk, that's Buddy McGurk right there. He fighting. Look how he avoided shots. He just jumped in the air. And <laughs> oh man. Pernell was all great, man. Rest in peace to Pernell Whitaker, bro. I ain't gonna lie, man. Rest in peace to him, bro. Now you can tell, buddy. Look at that head. That was that head. Still up there. Looking to see it, bro. Yeah, yeah, because I'm down, man. It's like, yeah, because if you could pull up that Augustus dude, I mean, he made everybody look silly, dude. That's why Floyd Mayweather didn't want to fight with him at all. Floyd did not want no beef with him. He, well, he Floyd said, did fight him. Floyd stopped him. You talking about Emmanuel Augustus? Floyd Mayweather did fight him and stopped him. I don't know if he fell off or not. Yeah, but. he stopped. Yeah, he, yeah, he did fight him though. He fought him. But remember, his, his name changed. His name used his name was Emmanuel Augustus, and it was a. Uh, something else. He changed. Yeah, he did name. change his name. I forgot. He did change his name. But Floyd said that was his toughest fight, to be honest, just keeping it real. Floyd always said that was his toughest fight. Yeah. He, he made it tough. He, that, he, to try to, he tried to catch him. That was a – yeah, I mean, it was funny watching Floyd <laughs> try to go after him. Dang, Purnell was the truth, bro. Like, I swear, bro, boxing is, is are in some great hands with a fighter like Shakur Stevenson, bro. You know what I mean? Like, bro, Shakur yesterday looked so spectacular in yeah, that fight. Yeah, what was yeah, that, my bad, my brother? He got the fang. He got the fangs, the rolls, the duck, the slip, every every move that that you that you need to make it in the game, man. That's why I was hurt. He died like he did, man. And and what's crazy, the world treated him kind of like boxing did, you know, like 
boxing them didn't, didn't didn't appreciate him. They cheated him and did, and that's what life did. You know what I mean? Cheated him and he, he died too young. He got hit by a car or something, didn't he? Yeah, he got hit by a car. He was, I guess, he was walking down the street, you know, and the car just um, ran him over. But man, boxing did him dirty in a way, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Boxing did him dirty, but I think that's why, uh, you know, he his life kind of ended up like that, bro. He wasn't treated like the 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 star that he was, bro. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man, boxing. This he was the best pound for pound fighter in the world, bro. And he he out here getting robbed against Jose Luis Ramirez. What kind of stuff is that? You know what I mean? When Julio Cesar Chavez was in close fights, they gave him every decision, bro. Every every decision went to Julio Cesar Chavez. Every time it was a close decision, you know what I mean? Um, they gave it to Oscar De La Hoya. Every time it was a close decision, they gave it to Canelo and all of that, bro. But when it came to, you know, Pernell Whitaker, an American fighter, Olympic gold medalist who represented his country, they always went against them. You know what I mean? Just the racism in boxing, bro. I, I got to go back to the racism now, bro. You know what I mean? If he was a white man, you know what I mean? They they would have gave him all those victories, bro. You know what I mean? So they, they just did. They be doing black fighters dirty. I have to say that, bro, to be honest. Man, I'm looking at these highlights, man. He punching with power, though, ain't he? <laughs> Hell yeah, he, especially at lightweight. You know what I mean? His natural weight. I mean, Roy Jones Jr. Yeah. said Pernell Whitaker was the greatest lightweight of all time. Yeah. But listen, he was 5'6". Like, how do we – we not – a lot of people have fallen for the steroid era to where some of these guys that, you know what I mean, who were little guys, like, not just, like, the, the guys who were bigger, who was able to stay down at the smaller weights and then move up and maintain power. But we're talking about the little guys, like the Pacquiao's, who kept – gaining power as they went up that's why people were so suspicious because they're like hold on man like most people don't gain weight till they 30 and gain in power and move up you gain you start to get your power your man strength around 25 26 you know what i mean then you your technique with your power makes you lethal at 28 29 30 but i just he was so small that the five six Look at how many people line like we was talking about. They said the tank was like five five. He is not five five. So he probably was five five instead of five six. And he went all the way to uh to uh junior middleweight and won a title. Yep, oh, and he man. beat the beat a great fighter too. Julio Cesar Vasquez. I'm telling you, like Stone Bone, if you ever get an opportunity, go, go watch uh go watch Julio Cesar. Damn, hold on. Go watch uh, Julio Cesar Vasquez versus Winky Wright. But whenever you get a chance, go watch Winky Wright versus Julio Cesar Vasquez. And you're going to see Winky Wright getting beat down by this dude, bro. And right here, we're checking out uh, Pernell Whitaker's um, knockouts, his top 10 knockouts. And look at him putting those punches together, showing off the hand speed, you know what I mean, combinations and all of that good stuff, bro. You know what I mean? His top 10 knockouts. How he was breaking people down, bro, and finishing people off. This is how Shakur Stevenson did last night. Going to the body, you know what I mean? He could do it all, bro. All time great, my brother Stone Bone. You know what I mean? His memory gonna live on through Shakur Stevenson, bro. You know what I mean? His memory gonna live on through young Shakur, bro. Shakur got the skills to do it, and just that footwork I seen yesterday from Shakur Stevenson. You know what I mean? And you know. Uh, Caraballo last night, Felix Caraballo, he came out the gates and he was he had Shakur Stevenson on the ropes in round number one. And Shakur made his adjustments immediately, bro. Like the man started just boxing circles around him, killing him with that foot movement. And Caraballo couldn't get up on him like that, bro. You know what I mean? And that's I see that same type of uh, footwork and that same type of ring IQ, ring generalship. And Shakur Stevenson, you know what I mean? That Pernell Whitaker had, as you can see, man. Pernell was man, he was a hell of a fighter, bro. You know what I mean? So uh so you you said you met Shakur before, right? With, with Bud. See my boy he's still up on here with me. Oh, he dipped off. Shout out to uh Stone Bone. He just fell off. Let's keep watching these highlights. You know what I mean? Pernell Whitaker. Great highlights. Pernell Whitaker clipping people with the right hand. You know what I mean? Big right hand by Pernell Whitaker. 
showing off the great ring generalship. Look at the power. You know what I mean? At 135, Purnell was knocking people out. Look at that. One punch left with the left hand. Clipped him. An Olympic gold medalist, Purnell Whitaker. You guys better act like you know how great he was, bro. One of the greatest fighters that, that ever lived. Shakur Stevenson. I'm giving him this comparison to a Purnell Whitaker, and he deserves it. After last night's performance, Shakur Stevenson been looking spectacular. His big win over Joe Gonzalez. Shakur Stevenson's big win yesterday against Felix Caraballo, making his debut at 130 pounds and made it look easy. You know what I mean? Young Purnell Whitaker. Shakur Stevenson is the next Purnell Whitaker. As you can see in these highlights, Purnell Whitaker showing off the great punching power. You know what I mean? He was a technician in the ring. He can box. He can punch. He can do it all. You know what I mean? One of the greatest to ever do it. Sweet Pete Whitaker, rest in peace. We love you, Sweet Pete. Rest in peace. Your legacy will live on through Shakur Stevenson. Your legacy will live on through the great young fighter Shakur Stevenson, bro. You know what I'm saying? So Pernell Whitaker, his name will be relevant forever. You know, he's a legend. That's one thing about being a legend in the sport of boxing. Your name will your name will forever live. You know what I mean? Be eternity, bro. Internal. Eternity, bro. Forever. The legacy. You know, 100 years from now, people will be talking about Pernell Whitaker. You know what I mean? And Shakur Stevenson got what it takes to be the next Pernell Whitaker. As you can see, the left hook putting people to sleep. Good night. Good night. Pernell Whitaker, his third greatest knockout against Rodriguez when Pernell broke him down with those body shots. Left hook upstairs, Pernell, banging him to the body. Let's go, Sweet P, baby. Olympic gold medalist. Pernell Whitaker was an Olympic gold medalist. Shakur Stevenson, an Olympic silver medalist. Very close. You know what I mean? Even in height, Pernell Whitaker, 5'6". Shakur Stevenson, 5'8". Very close in height and reach. Pernell Whitaker, 69-inch reach. Shakur Stevenson, 68-inch reach. Almost identical. Fighting style, identical. Great defense. Great reflexes. Speed, footwork, combinations. Punching power. It's all the same, bro. Sh Pernell Whitaker wasn't the biggest puncher. He was never the biggest puncher. Shakur Stevenson is not the biggest puncher. And But guess what? They both... Had great skills, bro. As you can see, the counter punching by Pernell Whitaker. And Pernell Whitaker can stand and bang as well. He can box you from the outside. He can do it all. You know what I'm saying? Shakur, Shakur Stevenson, the same thing. He showed us yesterday. Oh, look at that check left hook by Pernell Whitaker. Clipping him. Look at the knockout victory. The man is out. Oh, he don't know where he at. He, he looked drunk. <laughs> he looked drunk right there. Look at Pernell finish him. Showing that killer instinct. Rip into the body. Look at those body shots. Uppercuts. Oh, man. Referee forced to stop the fight. He couldn't continue. He couldn't continue. Look at Purnell taking his time. Counter punch. Oh, left hook upstairs. Oh, man. Put him to sleep. Purnell Whitaker's number one best knockout versus Harito. Finished him off. Look at the left hooks. Keep him coming. Got him on the ropes. He's leaning. Oh, man. Flatline, flatline, you know what I mean? Showing off the power. Pernell Sweet Pete Whitaker. Let's go. Left hooks. Throwing them haymakers. Look at the crowd on their feet. They loving what they see from Sweet Pete Whitaker. Finish him off. You know what I mean? Finish him off. Haymakers. Big shots. Got them through the ropes. Knocked them through the ropes, baby. You know what I mean? Salute. For sure, for sure, Stone Bone. Appreciate it, family. That was Stone Bone boxing with us, giving us that real deal. You know what I mean? Coco Tyler says Chavez beat Meldrick Taylor. Everyone go check the box wreck. Yeah, he got the victory, bro. They gave it to him for sure. Chavez was a great fighter, bro. I, I feel like Meldrick Taylor deserved that victory. I'm going to be honest with you, Coco Tyler. But, hey, everybody's entitled to, to their opinion. I'm not here saying I'm right. And somebody else is wrong, bro. You know what I mean? Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Let's go check out some Shakur Stevenson, you know, highlights. Shakur Stevenson training. 
Let me show you how hard Shakur Stevenson trains when he's in the gym, bro. Let's go, bro. Shakur Stevenson making it do what it do, bro. The man is going to be all time great. Pay attention. Don't blink. He's so fast. You don't want to miss it. You know what I mean? I felt like Melja Trader deserved it. You know what I mean? Richard still stopped the fight, I believe, prematurely. You know what I mean? It was a great fight. Shout out to Meldrick Taylor, who was another Olympian. Let's go check out Shakur Stevenson highlights while he's training. Young Shakur Stevenson. You know what I mean? While he's training. This is when he was younger. Look at Shakur, bro. Technician in the ring. Could break you down. You know what I mean? He could break you down systematically with his great jab. You know the man? He got the look. He got the great smile. He got the skills to go with it. You know what I mean? He made it look effortless last night as Shakur Stevenson working on the pads, you know what I mean, with his trainer. He lives in a gym. He's not a he's not like an Adrian Broner type of guy. Adrian Broner, who's known for going out, partying, and wasting his talent. Shakur Stevenson is a hard worker. He's surrounded by great talent. Terrence Crawford, Andre Ward, Jay Prince. He got an all-star team around him. You know, man is groomed. He's groomed for greatness. Look at Shakur Stevenson hitting those pads. Southpaw, just like Pernell Whitaker, taking his time, and he's making it look easy, bro. Making it look easy. The man loves to be in the gym. He loves to train. That's what you like to see from a young fighter. You know what I mean? Staying in the gym, working on his skills, and he's getting, he's only getting better and better. Shakur Stevenson is only 21 years old. He's only going to get better and better. You know what I mean? He hasn't even put on his man strength yet. Just wait until the, he puts on his man strength, how good he's going to be. You know what I mean? How strong he's going to get. You never know. I could see Shakur Stevenson, you know, possibly moving up to 100 and, uh, you know, possibly 147 pounds, maybe even 154 in the future. I could see Shakur Stevenson going all the way up to 154 pounds and becoming a champion. You know what I mean? So he started off at 126, became a champion. He's moving up to 130. You know what I mean? Become a champion at 130, a champion at 135, champion at 140, 147, and even 154 could be a six division world champion, bro. He has the potential to be a champion in six different weight classes, bro. You know what I mean? That's incredible. That's incredible if he can do that. You know what I mean? But I, you know, 150, 154 is probably too much, but I can see Shakur Stevenson moving up to 147 for sure. You know what I mean? You know, I can see Shakur Stevenson moving up to 154 as well. I can see him doing that, bro. You know what I'm saying? 140, 147, 147. You know, maybe 154 is pushing it, but I can see him going up, going all the way up to 147 for sure, be a five-division a champion in five different weight classes. You know what I mean? Everybody hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, bro. Young Shakur Stevenson. Young phenom in the sport of boxing. He's a young phenom, bro. I'm telling you. You know what I mean? I can see this kid taking over the sport of boxing in the near future, bro. If he keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to take over the sport of boxing. And that's for damn sure. Him and Devin Haney. Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney. They going to be dominating the sport of boxing for a very, very long time, bro. You know what I mean? Let's check out Shakur Stevenson on the back, showing off those skills. Check him out. Check him out, man. Look at him letting them hands go. Let, let it rip, Shakur. Let it rip. You know what I mean? Hard work, dedication. You know what I mean? Hard work, dedication. Hard work, dedication. You know what I mean? That's what he believes in. And we all know Floyd Mayweather wanted to sign Shakur Stevenson. Floyd Mayweather flew all the way out to um didn't Floyd Mayweather move all the way out to uh he flew all the way out to Brazil in the during the Olympics to go watch Shakur Stevenson fight in the Olympics. Even Floyd Mayweather went all the way to Brazil to watch Shakur Stevenson fight in the Olympics. You know what I mean? Yo, what up, D? Yeah, phone died for a small second, but I'm back, baby. For sure, for sure. Young Shakur, man, making it look easy, bro. 
watching Shakur Stevenson train real quick with my brother D Hodges. Shakur Stevenson, hey D Hodges, I know you got some uh, you know, some thoughts about uh, Javante Davis. Javante Davis, he doesn't take the sport serious, and he's you know always partying and he's uh, missing weight. But Shakur Stevenson, bro, is a different type of breed. Like the man lives in the gym. This is his life, boxing. You know what I mean? This is his life. He's dedicated to the sport. And this is what I love to see from this kid, man. This is what I love to see from young fighters, how dedicated they are to the sport. The man, this guy, this is him when he was about 16, bro. The man been boxing ever since I believe he was five years old, something like that. You know what I mean? Because I got to put Ryan Garcia up there. He's very disciplined, and he stays in the gym, too. No matter how anybody feel about him, that dude always stay on point. Ryan Garcia, like, he's a gym rat, too. He's like Haney and Shakur. Like, they really got that discipline where even if they ain't got a fight, they still training. Facts, man. This kid right here, he really got what it takes, bro. I mean, the next, the next great fighter, you know, Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney, they're going to be running the sport of boxing for a very, very long time, bro. I want y'all to pay attention to Shakur Stevenson's career, you know what I mean? And uh, I I'm telling you, he won't let you down. Well, who do you think will win? Because it's more of a realistic fight, Ryan Garcia Stevenson. Because they kind of is like the same weight class. Ain't Garcia like 126 too? Not Ryan Garcia 135. Ryan Garcia up there with Devin Haney and them. Damn, he's big. Oh, damn. Okay. That's yeah, Ryan Garcia big. big as hell. He about 5'10", five, 5'11", five, too. So Ryan Garcia, big kid. Damn, I swear to God, I thought he was at 130. My fault, bro. Yes, Ryan Garcia, a big kid, bro. Ryan is, is huge, bro. You know what I mean? He's tall. Like, I think realistic fights for Shakur Stevenson, possibly like Gary Russell Jr., um, Lomachenko fights with uh, even Javante Davis. I could see a Javante That'd Davis be a fight. Good one. That'll be a good one. Him and Mr. Gary Russell. Oh, that. I, I, I would actually pay money to watch that. I would actually, if it was $75. I would actually pay to watch that fight, and I don't pay for pay-per-views, but I think that fight would be beautiful. Because Mr. Russell ain't no suck, ain't no sucker neither, though. So I think that would be like a sucker to me against Lomachenko, to be honest. Lomachenko made him look like a sucker in that he fight. Does, see? And you know why? Because he thought he was gonna just go in there and beat this white boy up. Everybody happens. It happens to everybody. It's about how many times you lose, and he ain't lost again. He just he got happy because he thought he was just gonna go in there and wipe Lomo, but <laughs> so he hasn't been fighting nobody though. Oh yeah, but I'm just saying it'll be a good fight. Him and Gary Russell, that's a good test for him. If he go in there and dominate Gary Russell, what? That's a huge win. Facts, facts. But you know, uh, Gary Russell Jr. He was scared to me in that Lomachenko fight. Gary Russell Jr. looked really scared in that fight. You know, just to be honest, I remember, you know, during the face-off at the weigh-in, Gary Russell Jr. wouldn't even look into Lomachenko's face. He wouldn't even look him in his eyes. He put his head down during the weigh-in. So I lost respect for Gary Russell when he did that. You know, I think Shakur beat the brakes off of him. I want to see that fight. I think Shakur Stevenson to dog him out. For real, I think Shakur Stevenson. I, I think Shakur win too, but I still, it's like, it's a fight I would like to see. I got Shakur all day. But I think it'll be a good test for him. If he go in there and whitewash Gary Russell Jr., then he's, like, up there. For but, sure. But, you know, that fight probably ain't never going to happen. I swear to God, every fight we want to happen, I don't see him happening. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let me, let me play this interview real quick of Shakur Stevenson. I want the fans to hear this. Shakur Stevenson, where he says he's the best fighter in the world. He says that he's the best. Let me play it. Let me find it. Hopefully, I can find it. I just had it. Everybody hit the like button right now. Subscribe to the channel. Young Shakur Stevenson, future pound for pound king in the sport of boxing. He got a great team around him. Andre Ward, Terrence Crawford, Jay Prince. The sky is the limit for young Shakur Stevenson, bro. The sky is the limit for this kid. Future pound for pound king in the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? Here we go right here. Let's play this out for, for a second and get the fans a little peace. 
a Shakur Stevenson. Just the confidence. He says he's the best fighter in the world. I feel like every fighter should, should believe that they're the best fighter. You dig what I'm saying, D. Hodges? I feel like every fighter should believe they're, they're the best. You know what I mean? Uh, that's that's the mentality that every fighter should have. If you gonna if you feel you're not gonna be the best, why even box? That's why I didn't. I already knew what the results was gonna be. That's why I never tried to box. <laughs> you yeah, you good? You good? Let I me. Don't like getting, I don't like. I don't, I don't like getting punched in the face, man. And I don't care how good you are, you're getting punched in the face. And I can't take my gloves off. I would really want to fight. Cause I tried play boxing. When I was a little younger and the guy hit me real good, I really took off the gloves and really wanted to fight. Like I can't I, I can't get I'm not good at getting punched in the face. Let me play this interview real quick of Shakur. Right now. Fighting Saturday, Madison Square Garden in the big room. And he's fighting a twenty-four and one guy. And the twenty-four and one guy talked to him or years old, you're 10 and 0. He's talking to Bob Arum about you and, uh, you know, asking how his perception of you has changed. And he's been very impressed with how you've grown. How Have you grown as a professional like you thought you would? Has it been faster? Has it been slower? Characterize the process of getting to where you are right now. I feel like I've been doing what I was supposed to do and I've been getting better and better each fight. Uh, my last fight, I kind of showed everybody I can fight close, close range and on the inside. So, I feel like now I'm about to show a whole different part of my game that everybody got waiting to see. When you were fighting Madison Square Garden, she's what was it last year? I think I said, "What about you? Are you the number one, the top gun, the young gun?" I asked yeah, you. I asked, well, I, I I want to know if you remember. You remember what you said? Because we were comparing, contrasting. I said, "Well, oh, there's a female and a couple other guys. Where do you think you stand now? What did you say then? Where do you stand now, man?" I feel like I, I stand exactly what I said before. I don't remember what I said before, but I know I said that I'm the top dog and all the young guns coming up. And I can't wait to show everybody once again that I'm the best up and coming fighter in boxing. Shakara, you know, something else I asked Bob, I said, Bob, not everyone has been around the decades that you've been, or even me, right? These young kids, do they know? Is it different for them fighting at Madison Square Garden? Do they feel different fighting there? I'm not assuming everyone does. Do you, will it be different for you? Does it feel different going in? I actually fought in the big room before, so I kind of fought at Madison Square Garden twice, and I'm used to it now, so I don't think it's going to be no different. I feel like... Is it extra butterflies, or do you want to do extra good, or no? It's just, it's almost just another fight, because that's the way you want to handle it in your brain. I feel like I put in a lot of work for this fight, and I'm prepared for whatever he brings, so fuck the butterflies, I'm ready. And prediction Man, for Saturday night, Madison Square Garden, the big room, you and Christmas Diaz. Uh, I don't know the prediction. I don't got no prediction, but I'm going to win. Thank you, Shakur. I just like his attitude, bro. I like his attitude. D. Hodges, man, what you think about this kid's attitude? Of course, and he's winning, so true. As long as you keep winning, you can stick with that attitude. As long as you keep winning. It's just the point. I want to see these people, when they take their first L, how they deal with it. Now, I don't see this kid losing anytime soon, bro, unless he no, fights. No, no time like soon, no, but everybody almost lose once but Floyd. Maybe in Cal's Aggie, but everybody has taken an L, and I really want to see if they later in their career, if they take the L, that'll show where they're at, how they come back after the L. Because you see, Charlo took his first L, and then he came back, and he stopped Harrison the second fight. So I want to see how you deal with your first L, because everybody's going to get one, unless you're Floyd or Cal's Aggie. Ain't those the only two ones with zeros? I think he got robbed too, man. I think Charlo got robbed in that one, to be honest, dog. Like, oh yeah, of course, of course. But I'm just saying, like, retired people, like in Ward, they, they those are the only three that still got zeros. I think everybody else got an L so far. Like, not Haney and them, but 
I just want to see how they do with their first loss. How do they come back? Do they quit? Do they, you know, want to see Ryan Garcia? I want to see a lot of people how they come back from their L. Because they're going to take one. I'm sorry. It's hard to do a Floyd Mayweather or a Ward or a Kawasaki. So they're going to lose once, in my opinion. Here go a, a compilation of Shakur Stevenson sparring. Shakur Stevenson sparring compilation. Check it out, guys. That's Shakur Stevenson in the red headgear. You know what I mean? Uh, d -Hi, just tell me what you see from him and what do you like? You can break it down for us. You know what I mean? What I don't know. I like what I seen last night in the fight. I don't need to watch sparring. He showed me. He showed me last night what he doing in a real fight. I never go by sparring, but what he did last night, hands down. Yeah, he got this hands down like Purnell, though. Look, that's that Purnell Whitaker, bro. Woo! Look at him throwing combinations. Who's that, Tiafimo? I don't know who he's sparring right there. Shakur over here beating a brace off this dude. Combinations Shakur. upstairs. That's against Devin Haney right here. Shakur versus Devin Haney. This was, man, great work right here between Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney, bro. You know what I mean? Devin Haney's much bigger than Shakur. And uh, Shakur is, uh, I mean, Devin Haney is bigger and Devin Haney is younger. Shakur Stevenson is older than Devin Haney, but Devin Haney is bigger than him. It was great work between Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney. It was like some, you know, championship type stuff some uh hall of fame type of training it was great work for the both of them you know what i mean so shakur stevenson stays in the gym this is in front of floyd mayweather floyd mayweather wanted to sign shakur stevenson you know what i mean Sh floyd mayweather wanted to sign devin haney as well well devin haney was a, was a part of the money team for a very long time but once De devin haney uh became a free agent david ha devin haney had a big deal with eddie hearn that he couldn't refuse and floyd mayweather couldn't he couldn't match the offer that the zone and Eddie Hearn gave him. So I mean, Floyd Mayweather got his he got his own fighters such as uh, you know, uh, Javante Davis. Floyd Mayweather got fighters like um, he got Richardson Hitchens and those guys. But you know what? You know, Floyd Mayweather wanted to sign Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney for sure. He wanted to sign both of them. So this is great work between Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson right here, going toe to toe. Blow for blow. That's Devin Haney in the red head gear. Devin Haney's in the red head gear. Shakur Stevenson in the white with the white head gear. Shakur Stevenson fires a jab to the body of Devin Haney. Jab upstairs by Shakur Stevenson. Devin Haney putting the pressure on Shakur Stevenson. Devin Haney's applying pressure. Shakur with a one-two right down the pipe. You know what I mean? Devin Haney backing him up. You know what I mean? Great work. Devin Haney was 16 years old at this time, and Shakur was 18 years old. So Shakur Stevenson, I believe, is a year and a half older than Devin Haney. One year and a half. Shakur Stevenson with a left left hook right down the pipe, right on Devin. Shakur getting off first. You know what I mean? Two of the best young fighters in the world. You know what I mean? Just great work. Learning from each other. You know what they say? Uh, iron sharpens iron. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's what they're doing when they get in a sparring match with each other. They're helping each other out. Shakur with a left hook upstairs. Devin Haney caught it. You know what I mean? It was great work. Devin Haney fires the right hand and misses. This, I believe this was round number two when Shakur won that round number two. Left hook, Devin Haney with a big left hook. And Shakur Stevenson smiles off. He laughs it off. It was great work. Shakur dropping his hands down. Shakur Stevenson got those cat-like reflexes. Shakur with a left hook, counter left. Devin fires big right, big left hooks. Great work between Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson going toe-to-toe -to -toe right in front, in front of Floyd Mayweather, bro. It was great work. Shout-outs to Bill Haney. There go Bill Haney, Devin Haney's father right there in the corner. You know what I mean? It was great work. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Shakur Stevenson, the next Pernell Whitaker. Bro, we checking him out right now with some great highlights. Great work with Devin Haney, bro. We watching some great Shakur Stevenson sparring. Shout out to my boy D Hodges on the panel. Appreciate it, D Hodges, my brother. No, God keep you company, my good man. For sure, for sure. You already know, bro. Hey, you know, tomorrow barbershop conversations. He's gonna have Erickson Lubin on his uh on his channel, Erickson Lubin, and he's gonna have a coach, Kevin Cuttingham. Great trainer, Kevin Cuttingham. He's gonna have both of them on a uh, show tomorrow, bro. So they're gonna be lit. 
Oh, I'll definitely be there. Oh, yeah. Hey, Erickson Lubin, bro. Erickson Lubin is a good fighter. Even though he got knocked out by Charlo, he's still a good fighter. Yeah, everybody told you. Everybody takes an L. <laughs> it's about how many L's you take. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> everybody gets one. That's when you get that five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> And then that's when it gets bad. But everybody's going to take an L. It's very hard to do. Like, three fighters went perfect, and that's Ward, Calzaghi, and Mayweather out of every boxer. So I see they're gonna t they might take an L later in the career. And it's the comeback from the L that really determines how you are as a fighter. For sure, for sure. This is great sparring for, for the people that don't know people that just came to the channel. This is Devin Haney versus Shakur Stevenson in a great sparring match. Then this is what I feel like, bro, the two best young fighters in the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? Devin Haney, the next Floyd Mayweather, Pernell Whitaker. I mean, Devin Haney, the next Floyd Mayweather, Shakur Stevenson, the next Pernell Whitaker, bro. You know what I mean? These are the two best young fighters in the sport of boxing for years to come. The, they will be the future of boxing, you know what I mean, for a very, very long time. This is like watching Floyd Mayweather versus Pernell Whitaker. Look at Devin Haney showing off the hand speed. Devin Haney combinations lands on Shakur Stevenson. Two of the great, two of the young great fighters right here, bro. Two of the best young great fighters in the sport right here. Going toe to toe, blow for blow right here. Unbelievable, bro. Fighting in, the, fighting in the phone booth. Yeah, fighting in the phone booth. Shakur standing, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Devin right here. Devin with an uppercut. Shakur Stevenson shoots the jab. Shakur with a jab, uppercut Devin Haney. Devin Haney's trying to walk him down. Right hook to the body, Devin. Devin got him on the ropes. Devin put in a mental pressure on him, in a physical pressure, pushing him off. Shakur much smaller. Shakur with a right hook to the body. And a left hook. Man, Shakur got skills, bro. Shakur got skills, bro. Both of them. You know what I mean? Both of these guys. Great talents, bro. And this is when Devin Haney was 16 years old. Shakur Stevenson was 18. Look at Shakur Stevenson with his hands down like you Pernell Whitaker right here. Shakur shoots a left hook and he just missed. Round number two is over. It was great work. Great work. You know what I mean? Great work, bro. This is Hall of Fame type stuff, bro. Haney, Haney, Haney. Coco to Don in the building. You know what I mean? Shout out to my boy Coco. You heard? Let's get it popping. Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney. Some great, great work right here. You know what I mean? All day, bro. We got great work, bro. I'm giving you guys exclusive footage, bro. You know what I mean? Exclusive footage for my peoples. Let's get it popping. Round number three, Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney. Some of the best work you're going to see. Look at Floyd Mayweather right there watching. There go Money Mayweather. Watching his protege, Devin Haney versus Shakur Stevenson. You know what I mean? They fight in front of Floyd. They trying to, you know what I'm saying? They trying to pr prove to Floyd Mayweather who's going to be the next Mayweather. I mean, imagine how Floyd Mayweather feels like. You got all these fighters coming up, all the best young fighters, and they all getting compared to Floyd Mayweather, bro. I mean, how do you think Floyd Mayweather feels about that, D. Hodges, that everybody wants to be compared to him? He loves it because he's a great, so he loves it, though. <laughs> He's just chilling, you know what I mean? Every young fighter wants to be the next Floyd Mayweather. I feel like there can only be one next Floyd Mayweather. You know what I mean? Devin Haney's the closest thing to him because I feel like Devin Haney, he's training with Floyd Mayweather. He's actually getting trained by Floyd. Devin Haney's been around Floyd Mayweather since he was eight years old. Devin Haney trained with Floyd Mayweather Sr. and Roger Mayweather. You know what I mean? And Devin Haney was a part of the money team. Like He came up under Floyd Mayweather. Shakur Stevenson, you know what I mean? He came up, you know, he came up doing his own thing. And now Shakur Stevenson is under Terrence Crawford and he's under Andre Ward. You know what I mean? So Devin Haney's under Floyd Mayweather still to this day. So that's why I give Devin Haney, you know, that that praise, that next Floyd Mayweather praise, because he trained with his Floyd Mayweather Sr., Floyd Mayweather Sr., who started off the Floyd Mayweather name, Floyd Mayweather Sr., who trained his son, Floyd Mayweather Jr., since he was a baby. Devin Haney trained with Floyd Mayweather Sr. his whole career, pretty much. And now he's training with Floyd Mayweather, you know what I mean? So, and he trained with Roger Mayweather. Look at Devin Haney, got Shakur on the ropes, shooting the left hook. Devin Haney in the red, young Floyd Mayweather, Devin Haney. 
The next, Pernell Whitaker, Shakur Stevenson. This is great work. We watching greatness on this screen, bro. You know what I mean? I could watch this over and over again. You know what I mean? Just imagine if they do fight. It'll be one of the best fights in boxing history, I think. It'll be one of the best fights in the history of boxing, bro. You know what I mean? Too bad they're in different weight classes. You know what I mean? And they're friends on top of that. Will we ever see this fight? You never know. You know what I mean? You never know. But right now, Shakur Stevenson, you know, shooting the jabbies. You know, he's just taking his time. He's missing shots. Devin throws a wild. Oh, Devin with a big left hook. Big left hook. Devin got him on the ropes. Shakur ties him up. Devin Haney putting that mental pressure on him. I told you guys I had Devin Haney winning this sparring match two rounds to one. You know what I mean? Some people feel like Shakur Stevenson won this, this sparring session. I know Fresh BX feel like Shakur Stevenson won the sparring session. I know Aki TV, Aki TV, he felt like Shakur Stevenson won the sparring session. Me, I felt like Devin Haney, Devin Haney won the sparring session. Coco, Coco to Don felt like Devin Haney won the sparring session. You know what I mean? So it's just a, a great fight if it ever happens. I feel like it'll be a close fight. I just got Devin. I think Devin is too big for him. They make weight classes for a reason. Shakur with a big left hook. Down the pipe on Devin Hayden that just landed towards the end of that video. We got more footage of Shakur Stevenson sparring. Here goes some more right here. Let's go check him out. Let's keep watching it. Uh, Shakur Stevenson in the gym, bro. Kid is a hell of a fighter. Kid is a hell of a fighter, bro. No doubt about it. Tremendous potential for Shakur Stevenson. There goes Shakur Stevenson in the blue. You know what I mean? He loves to be in the gym. And he loves to train. Everybody hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, yo. You know what I mean? But uh, let me play some footage real quick before we wrap it up. I got this uh, I got this Pernell Whitaker um, footage I want to show real quick. Pernell Whitaker versus Buddy McGirt. And uh, we're going to wrap it up and go check out Barbershop in a little bit. Here we go. Man, I can't wait for Barbershop to have Erickson Lubin on there, though. That's going to be a fire show, bro. Let's play this footage.
We do moves, and he has moves on moves. This is Gail Sayers in boxing trunks. A lot of I'm trying to use the drag. Mike Michael play basketball. I like Magic Johnson do his, you know, his, his thing, and Michael do his thing. I have my thing, you know. I like to dipsy do a little bit, and uh, I like to uh, sometimes go behind the back. You know, I have my own my, my ways of, of fooling a man. In a poorly scored draw against Julio Cesar Chavez last September, Whitaker was technically dominant. His style and tactics kept Chavez off balance most of the fight. Chavez had been considered the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. I remember Julio Cesar Chavez after the fight was Chavez lost. I don't care what those clowns and clowns clothing the judges were telling me. I went over to talk to them and tripped over their same eye dogs. But Chavez, after the fight, complained about Whitaker stooping low. He was bending over. But gee, that's a shame. What he was doing was ducking punches. Whitaker has fought nearly every contender in every weight class he's passed through. And he's taken titles all along the way. But for Brunel, the distinction of best pound for pound was what counted most. With it comes respect. People just love to see big guys going in and bang it out. You know, big heavyweight guys. You know, and they get all the respect. What I try to do is I try to, you know, get a little piece of the pot. If Perno Whitaker was a heavyweight at this point here, they would be comparing him with a with a Mahama weight. They would be comparing him with a Billy Khan, with a Joe Lewis, uh, that type of a fighter. Whitaker shows offense, generalship, defense. It's all the way aggressiveness. And I think that goes in his bundle of assets towards making him the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world today. We are live at the Scope in Norfolk, Virginia. We're coming up in a matter of moments. Rennell Whitaker defends the WBC World Welterweight Championship against the man from whom he won it in March of 1993. Buddy McGurk is scheduled for 12 rounds. Rennell Whitaker has worn this label, Gill, of best pound-for-pound -pound in boxing for more than a year now, ever since the Chavez fight. You put him in historical perspective for us. How good is he? Well, he has more natural ability than any fighter in the world today. He does things in the ring that just can't be taught. But what he really does, he uses those lightning reflexes to make the other guy miss, score points, and win rounds. And while the facts make it difficult for you not to cover Rennell with glory, it's worth noting that the title victory over McGirt was, on the scorecards, the closest of Brunel's recent victories. In fact, two judges, Chuck Jampa, 115-113, Rudy Ortega, 115-114, scored it within two points as a victory margin. Maybe not too coincidentally, both of those judges are here to score the fight again tonight. And Larry for sure, Merchant, for sure. Buddy McGirt, I got one more video. I want to show up Brunel real quick. One more video, Brunel. Shout out to my boy Coco in the chat. Got one more Pernell Whitaker video, and we're probably going to end it. You know what I mean? Shout out to Coco. Shout out to D. Hodges. Pernell versus Azuma. Azuma Nelson video, exclusive footage of a young Pernell Whitaker. Only lost once was a robbery. When he was growing up in the Young Spark projects of Norfolk, Virginia, Brunel Whitaker turned to boxing. His life was tough, and only in the ring could he be so in control, in command, in charge. Now, Little Pete has become Sweet Pete, the world champion. He's become someone to look up to in Norfolk. Yeah,
was here that Whitaker spent the first 20 years of his life. He's gotten out, but he hasn't forgotten. Yo, D. Hodges, you still there, my brother? Oh, yeah, I'm here. That, I told you, I watched all his fights in real life. I'm 40 years old. I was watching them. For sure, D. Any final thoughts? We're about to close it, man. Go to uh, Barbershop, man. What's your final thoughts, my brother, before we head out? Oh, he's always going to be an all-time great. And, you know, I had a ball on your show, and you know I'll be back. Tomorrow you're doing a fight thing? Yeah. They got some what? boxing on tomorrow. Some boxing is on tomorrow, but... I don't know. We probably do the fight. It looked like some bomber fight. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be interested in those fights, bro. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah. Well, you know, I'll be on your show tomorrow if you're on, and I'll see y'all at barbershop. I'm about to go over there now. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna be on program. for show tomorrow. We're gonna be on for show tomorrow. Um, I was gonna say, um, thank you so much, D Hodges, for pulling up, man. Don't worry about the the cussing thing. You know what I mean? Uh, I did good. I didn't cuss. I told yeah, you, you I was real good. You did. I just was <laughs> drunk. So, yeah, I don't think the show been. It looks like the show ain't even been flagged today, so it's weird, man. I, I think it's something to do with YouTube, my brother, because I think, um, man, I just don't know what it is. YouTube got to fix it, man, because it wasn't like that. It's like as soon as this corona stuff happened, then it then they start doing this, bro. So it's just something to do with YouTube, I think, man. You know, I appreciate it, my brother. You know what I mean? Per hey, Shakur Stevenson, the next Pernell Whitaker, guys. Make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Peace out, Love Coco, you, bro. my brother. Peace you out, have a good bro. Thank you, bro. We signing out. Peace.